Oh my god, 28. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, guys. What's going on? We don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't. <laughs> that is the type of time we're on right, right now. Welcome to Soul Palette Pod. I am D. Hello, I'm Capri. What's up, Shotty? Yes, the Soul Palette Pod. Well, at this point, we were episode what? 33? Yes. Oh, that's a great number to master number. By episode 33, you should already know what Soul Pilot Pod is about. So I am just going to say welcome. Welcome. You know, welcome to the table, honey. Yes. You already know what we're doing out here in these streets. Apparently, uh, we are very educational for our listeners, which is always the goal. So it's not like I'm shocked. But um, I was happy to still hear it again. Y'all don't be saying this in the comments. So (laughs) I still am happy to hear it out loud, honey. I will take it however I can get it. I mean, I was looking at our views. Our views are coming up. I don't yeah. know if you noticed. They have. I'm, they are like. I haven't let myself views. look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've stopped letting myself look because then I'm just gonna be I frustrated. Like everyone's. I just looked at it and I haven't looked yeah. at it. I, don't know. I just I look just to make sure that the content is right. There's no glitches or whatever. Oh right. And then I do check and see like. I like within that first week, like the views, or whatever, and then I, I just oh, go, the first I week? don't go back oh, to it. Oh no, I don't never check in the first. I don't week. go back <laughs> to it. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, they are circulating. Yeah, they are circulating. I, I gotta and more on Facebook. So shout out to D for making our Facebook page actually, because people are more, like, shared. The last one they just shared like oh, the one, a lot. One with Erica. Yeah, nice. The one with Erica got like six shares, which is nice. We That's just started than, our Facebook. Yeah, page, I was gonna say so, and it, it reached like six hundred people, and then nice. um. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of random follows on Instagram too. I love. Yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, yeah, we're doing our thing. We doing growth our thing. Growth is real. It the takes its time, but it works. It, Ooh, it's happening. It's giving episode title. The growth is real. Yes, growth is real. And that's on period. Period. What's up, y'all? We're doing Irish whiskey today. <laughs> so we have shifted off of bourbon. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, and then we did wine last episode. So I mean, we're doing good. We're doing good. Yeah. Irish whiskey today. Yes. Not from any one specific distillery, so we nope. got a nice little lineup for y'all. We got two different blends, yes, and then we have a single pot still and a single malt Irish whiskey. This is just so exciting! I don't, I, don't, I think this is our first time doing Irish whiskey. It is on the, the pod, so excitement! So let's talk about what Irish whiskey is. Yeah, now we had to go a little WSET on y'all, yes, uh, just to refresh our own brains and also refresh and make sure we're giving y'all as accurate as information as possible yes of course so i'm just gonna kind of read through what irish whiskey is and the law for it um the laws discussed in the section were written by the republic okay i hate this book so much <laughs> hey, uh, this book is not it's okay we love you wsct never we mind love you, WSET. <laughs> I'm going to skip a sentence and go here. It can be made from a mash of malted grains as well as all unmalted grains and other cereals. Um, exogenous enzymes are permitted, meaning... Um, oh, let Exogenous. Me, on. Is that... Um, ooh, actually, let me not try to guess and let me just do my Google. Yeah, do it. Do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my, my computer Exogenous? Enzymes are permitted. I I think what that means is that it doesn't. It can be. Oh, okay. Relating to or developing from external yeah. factors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's what it sounded like. The spirit must be distilled to a strength of less than ninety four point eight percent ABV and matured in wooden vessels of seven hundred liters or less for a minimum of three years on the island of Ireland. Oak is not required, but in re- in reality, it is the norm. Only water and caramel color can be added to the. Mi- Matured spirit, which must have a bottling strength of at least 40% ABV. Cool. Mm. Um, we got types of Irish whiskey. So we have four types of Irish whiskeys. Um, pot still Irish whiskey slash Irish pot still whiskey. And that is a whiskey that is made from a mash that is included a minimum of 30% unpeated malted barley and a minimum of 30% unmalted barley. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and other unmalted cereals. It must be distilled in pot stills either twice or three times. Um, second, malt Irish, which is one of the ones we have, right? Is this a single malt? Uh, I would think so, yeah. Irish okay. malt whiskey, yeah, because then there's blended. 
Okay, yes. Um, okay. So, a, so, yes, we do have one. This is a whiskey that is made from a mash that is made up 100% malted barley. This may include peated malt, and it must be distilled in pot stills either twice or three times. Then we have mm. grain Irish whiskey, or Irish grain whiskey, which I don't understand why they keep changing that. Um, a whiskey yeah, that's weird. <laughs> okay. I- a whiskey that is made from a mash containing unmalted grains with malted barley. Malted barley can make up no more than 30% of the mash, and it must be distilled, oh, it must be distilled in column stills. So what? It can't make up any more than, huh. Yeah, so if there's, malted, if there's malted barley in there, it cannot be more than 30% in a grain whiskey. In a grain whiskey. Okay. And it must be distilled in a column still. So, so this is our first one that has to be distilled in column stills. Wow. Where pot and Irish malt must be in pot stills. Yeah. And then blended Irish whiskey is a whiskey that is blend of two or more different whiskey types and a combina- any combination of Irish pot, Irish malt, or Irish grain. So that makes sense. Blend it. You can blend all this shit together. <laughs> doesn't and it doesn't it says blend it, you can blend all that shit and because you're blending it all it could be either still pasta or comps okay and yep and it talks about spelling whiskey with e or y it it doesn't matter i was gonna say i don't <laughs> think they really care like that do yeah they? it doesn't matter okay, okay. So, our first one. Yes. What's our first sip? Si- 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 Crazy, si- this is recording. Si- 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 you can go back and re-listen to that if you got lost. Because I yes. think while I was reading, I was also getting lost. I will uh, <laughs> I will try to provide the bullet-pointed list as she's talking for the tubers who actually watch us. Because I was um, like, uh-huh, okay. This is also why I am long-term working on a actual, um, long-term, meaning I haven't gone back to it yet. The yeah. sheet... The, um, which it makes it easier to understand why. Yeah, narrowing all these down it. into basically into bullet points. Yeah. But to do that, you're going to have to take the Soul Palette class. Oh. <laughs> so, first, the, first, we have up JJ Corey the Gale. So, the first time I tasted this Irish whiskey was at Silver Lion okay. um, about a couple of weeks ago they, for their. Um, oh, I think I saw something about that. Yeah, this this was their industry night. So every Tuesday they have industry nights and different brands come by. Um, mm. uh, this is my first industry night. It was nice. And so JJ Corey the Gale, um, the Gale is named after the a bicycle that JJ Corey actually invented. Awesome, <laughs> huh. uh, and it is a perfect marriage of Irish whiskey flavors and showcase of our juicy fruit bomb house style. Don't know what that means. Um, the Gale is made from some of the rarest single malt and grain cask in our library of flavors, so it's giving blended, mm-hmm. um, distilled. Sorry, in our grain class, um, aged from four to thirty years old. The heart of the blend, wow. right, is a vatting of Irish single malts distilled in 2002 and 2006, matured in ex-bourbon barrels, and um, with a top dressing of 1991 single malt from ex-sherry, but what? Wait a minute. Say that last line. Yeah, we're going to do this again. The heart of the blend is a vatting of Irish single malts distilled in 2002 and 2006. Okay matured in ex bourbon barrels so our 2002 and 2006 were matured in ex bourbon barrels mm-hmm. and then they say with a top dressing of so i'm guessing they pulled a little bit of a 1991 single malt from an ex sherry butt cast wow yeah for complexity and depth the addition of the irish single grain balances the blend okay mm-hmm. providing the bright sweet citrus flavors uh, irish whiskey is known and loved for it. okay um, a lot going on in this joint. A lot going on in this joint. So, four to thirty years, seven fifty milliliters, forty six percent ABV, meaning it's ninety two proof. Ninety two proof. Okay. So, on a lower end, that's things. like a common. I mean, because the single malt is ninety two proof too. So now I'm wondering, yeah. like, are they all ninety two proof? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it has to be. A that's kind of cool. 40, if they are. So maybe, maybe Irish whiskey. I don't know. I've never seen a, a cast proof. I don't. Know. I've I don't pay never attention had to, a cash strength whiskey. If I did, I didn't know that I did. Right? Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not paying much attention to them. So here we go. That's so funny. It's not really as emphasized when it comes to like even for scotches. I don't hear that really talked about like cash strength scotch yeah. or whatever. Like as a thing. Now, this good old is Americans. This is so lemon. I was about to say like, when you want to say no pale gold, lemon, that's lemon. not a reposado. Listen. Here we go. That's it right there. And here we go. <laughs> This is it. And here it goes. Period. For the tubers. Period. <laughs> Very Megan Thee Stallion stirring your face. Oh, <laughs> she was 
stern, bitch. I love that. I'm going to start, okay, okay, start okay, doing okay. that when I'm out in public. <laughs> Period. And like I'm just posed up. Very intensely stern. It is really soft. So soft. I would give me white flowers for me, like white, white flowers, and ooh, what is this? Almost like there's something like salinity. I, I was know, going to say al- it's almost says not to say that, almost but. giving me swimming pool. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, okay. There's like there's a what is that that I'm trying to think of? It's like is it chemically or like sea salt water pool? Like what are you thinking? I'm thinking chlorine. I'm leaning towards salt water pool, but at the same time, like okay, no, maybe it's chlorine, but. Because I'm, what I'm smelling is not chlorine. Right. But I f- it smells like I just walked into an indoor pool. Right. Whatever that air smells like in there, that's what this smells like. It's a combination of water, not quite the chlorine because it's di- it's super diluted. So we're not going to, you know, uh, unless they're trying to burn our skin off and shit. Right. You're not really going to smell the chlorine like that. But it smells like pool. Nice. Don't let that deter y'all, guys. It smells yeah. good. It's just it whatever good. that waft is when you like walk into an indoor pool. I love that. I'm wow. Indoor that pool just. In a while. It's crazy when you smell and taste it. Like you just get like memories. little blasts of yeah, mm-hmm. like of memories or whatever that it triggers. That's so. That's why I love tasting stuff. White pepper. Definitely white pepper, and there's something fruity. Lemon. Definitely lemon. It's something sweet though. Maybe light, like maybe I'm getting honeycomb. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking honey, but I'm also thinking just like wow. Maybe even like a lemon cello, lemon cordial, where the sugar is coming. Lemon from that. cordial. There yeah. we go. Because it's that that sugar content of the cordial. Like yes, that's there we go. Lemon cordial. Because like as soon as I said lemon, it's like I can't even get away. You can't get away from it because it's the peel. Right? It's the oils. And the juice. And the juice. Literally. Plus sweet. There we go. Okay, okay. Gael. Oh, it's good. There is definitely a, mm-hmm. this a, is a smokiness. A fruitiness. To, smokiness. Smokiness to it. Mmm. Mmm. Nut, fruit, and smoke. That sounds like a, <laughs> a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. Pause. No, for real. It's, it, it does. Hmm. Mm. It's what not too hot. What kind of food are we getting? Oh wow! It gets really waxy. Mm-hmm. Really waxy. Mm. I want to say. I'm trying to figure out what the like, food is. White peach, a little bit, or like some kind yeah, of like stone a nectarine, fruit, nectarine. Maybe? For sure, like, yeah, agreed on that. Like, but there's skins on those. Not not exactly like juicy, juicy fruit, but like mm-hmm. eating right eating the fruit flesh from the skin. If that makes any sense. Yes, it does. Yes, makes perfect sense. Like that little extra that you didn't cut off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is interesting. Hmm. Now, what they say this blend was again? So it's a blend from a 2002 and a 2006 it's barrel. Single malts. Single malts. That were, um, yeah, 2002. Then it was topped off. Ex bourbon. That was ex bourbon. That was finished in ex bourbon cast. Okay. And then it yeah. was topped off with another single malt. A 1991 was, single malt. Mm-hmm. Yes. 1990. You said 1991? Yes. That's when I was born, y'all. Yes. Oh. And that one had sherry butts in the cask. That was from a sherry butt cask. Yes. yes. And then bringing in Irish grain. To balance. Wow. Hmm. How tasty. That is like. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. so because if it was all the single malts, it would have been straight malted barley right. through the whole blend. Right. Which would have made it way sweeter. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. So I think that smokiness and that bite maybe comes from whatever other grains they blended in here. Right. Wow. Super cool. That is really cool. That's super cool. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good first sip. It was a good first sip. Mm-hmm. What's been going on, girl? How you feeling? Child, I feel like <laughs> like I'm literally just go not going through the motions. I'm not going through the motions because I'm present. Mm-hmm. But there's just so much. It feels like there's so many moving parts right now. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. that I am just trying to stay as still as possible mm-hmm. internally mm-hmm. to like calmly manage it all. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. I'm on some weird halfway line between present and like outer body. True. That's I how I feel, feel right now. I feel that a lot. I mean, you know, I'm always transparent with y'all. Like, just lost a friend. Yeah. Um, my skin has been having issues. I haven't been feeling motivated. I haven't done my challenges. So, bitch gonna be trying to do my challenges. I was gonna say, at I've, the been, pool at I've been sprinkling them. I've been sprinkling them. I haven't been good at doing it every day, yeah. but I have been like, at least in those moments where I know I have time, I'm like, bitch, you know you got at least 30 minutes right now. Like, you can try. To Just go do fucking yoga. Like, I'm like, it's been that. I've been trying to get up early. Right now, I haven't felt motivated to get up past like six. Six is still early, but yes, it I'm is. Used, my alarm goes off at five and I just sleep an extra hour. Okay, that's not bad. So I'm not changing my alarm because yeah. I still wanted to wake me up at five. Yeah. But I haven't been good at actually just hopping up because alarm if I wake up at five, up. I could do an hour of yoga for real. Alarms are traumatic for me. Are they traumatic for you? I have recently understood that I don't like to be waking up by an alarm. Like, my body mm-hmm. naturally wakes up at a certain time, and mm-hmm. I kind of like to trust my internal clock. I know that I need alarms for certain things, but mm-hmm. I am now figuring out how much it actually incites anxiety in me. Oh. So I'm like, I like to, like, let my body wake up when it can. That's why I like to have things later on in the day. Like, let's do something at noon. I was going to say that. Let's that do works something here. Work. You worked in the evening. Yeah. So. so like so like I know that my body's gonna wake up naturally. If I had a good night, the day the next day I'm waking up naturally at eight eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. Which is like, okay, now if I wanna decide that I wanna put on a, a alarm, sure, but my body is having so much anxiety while I'm sleeping about the alarm, I wake up twenty mm. minutes, thirty minutes before my alarm. Uh, okay. So like it's like I've now noticed how much alarms are just like I don't want to live that life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at all. Like for getting on a flight, sure. But that's yeah. why I, also I was gonna say I only get that type of anxiety when I know I got something going yeah. on. Like if I have a flight, I barely sleep the night before. I don't sleep. I really if hardly I, sleep, uh, or I sleep as long as I possibly can, and then I'm up for the next four hours before I have to go out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's why I do my hair last minute. That's why I pack mm-hmm. last minute. Cause I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna be up. That way, I know I need to leave at the house at this time. And also something about alarms really i get to i'm me. i'm the night before finalizer mm-hmm. like i might wind up being up till like midnight one o'clock but everything's done mm-hmm. so i sleep and at least the only thing i have to do is like pop up get dressed and go yeah if i try to stay up oh my god so i would probably sleep. i'd be the person that'll fall asleep like the hour before i need to leave and be so pissed <laughs> So I'll sleep. I'd rather sleep than get things done. And then I'm like, okay, I got, I know I can get my hair done, yeah. pack in about four or so hours. It's going to take me like two hours, depending on what kind of hair I want to do. Mm-hmm. It's going to take me like two hours, especially if I'm watching TV. Then it's going to take me like an hour and a half <laughs> to pack. <laughs> so this is, and then I know that I need to call the car by this time. So if I need to call a car by 6 a.m., then I, I need pre-schedule to be up my, always 2 pre-schedule my lift. And I'm just up till, till I get on the plane. <laughs> Um, it's crazy it's crazy but and I, I think try to knock to out with, on a plane yeah yeah oh I, I can sleep on a plane that's how i know i'll be all right because i can put me on a plane i'm going to sleep put me in a car i try i because it'd be ubers and these niggas out here crazy yeah it's crazy sleep, yeah but I if wish. it's with somebody i know if i'm in a car with somebody i'll go to sleep i'm out i'm you could <laughs> i'm trying to stay up is what i'm trying <laughs> to do I think that's also why i don't drive no more either well, outside of like my license thing, but like, <laughs> and I was just telling Rod, I was like, Rod told Capri, she need to go ahead and get her fucking license reinstated because I don't have time to play. I'm not moving no closer to DC, so <laughs> she gonna have to drive at some the, point. Probably be catching Amtrak's after her house. <laughs> Amtrak, bitch. See, you and Greg love to play with me so much. I am not that far. Oh, I mean, the Mark Train. No, I'm not. See, look, but you could have a joke. Okay. You could, metro. You right now, it's just a metro ride away. <laughs> That's it. We just a metro ride. But if she take my ass any further, because she told me I wanted to live by water and shit, I'm like, oh my God. What was she trying to do, Annapolis? Uh, that was on the list. Edgewood, nice Maryland, Annapolis, Maryland. Where's Edgewood, Maryland. I don't know where. The- like it was if we were going towards like the Bay Bridge, like if we were if we were on a trip to Ocean City or somewhere up that way, it's a one of those along there. I'm not living out there, not at this prime age of my life. That sounds crazy. That so. sounds like a, either a vacation home or right. a like you're retiring or something. Like all you do is retiring. 
I'm trying to be like out the country though. Like so. I don't know about that, right? I'm just trying yeah, to we we we, <laughs> we, figure, we figuring it out. We're we it out. Girl. Where it's is wrong. that? Fucking at the edge of the world. <laughs> Even if I had a car, I'm not trying to drive out Edgewood. <laughs> no, because that shit is like 40 <laughs> minutes an hour or so. Nah, like for who? Chill. Not to live, but yeah. no, that won't be no time soon. Vacay homes. Vacay homes, I believe in living out in your own space of such. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, I need conveniency on convenience. Oh, for like sure. In my day-to-day to be- life. Sure. Be close to I need to make sure Instacart stuff. still makes travel yeah. to my home. <laughs> I need Uber Eats, Grubhub, all those things to still be within <laughs> delivery range. I can't Everything. go so far out that I can't get my groceries delivered. I'm well, spoiled like, now. If I want to go out and have a time, you know, and, and know I'm going to be a little bit tipsy and stuff, you can't go out into the city and then try to go back to Edgewood. Like, that don't no, sense. exactly. That's why I was like, no, I still, as long as we're still having a social life, <laughs> we're not going to the edge of nothing. <laughs> You're like just even when I have kids, I'm gonna have a social life, you're just and my kids it. are gonna need to have friends that are not just these little like children of the corn, <laughs> like living in the woods. Like I'm no, but I legit, need my kids to still be city. No, you can, be, you can be in a little suburb in you, but mm. you still gotta know how to navigate these city streets, my guy. So. Like, yeah, no. like we don't like we all watch Stranger Things. We don't want to have like little Willie out here. Gotta little paddle, Willie paddle, paddle, paddle to four miles to get home. Like it makes Bruh, no sense. That's out here. fucking obscene. You know what I'm saying? Like don't get me wrong, they still are doing like definitely better now. Like niggas don't have to ride their bikes everywhere, but still, still, still. She I needed a car growing and... up, going to high school. I needed a car just to be able to. Like, not have to ride the bus, of course, but like the bus was far. Everything was far. Like, oh, get see, to work. I needed a thankfully car. Thankfully, middle like, school and um, actually all through elementary school, too. I was, well, when I was going to elementary school in DC, my, uh, my mom just, we always got a ride to my school because um, I went technically out of my area. Oh, nice. But, um, you know, <laughs> fucking, the border was not a place to go walking to school. So, period. We went to a different school. I actually went to school. Um, in Southeast, like right up the street from where I used to live on D Street, oh. um, which I didn't realize until I was driving through that neighborhood. I was like, oh, this is walking. <laughs> it looks so different as an adult. It just seems so much bigger as a fucking, a child, yeah. yeah, like a fucking six, seven year old. But um, middle school, elementary school, when I lived in Germany, all through like high school, I was always close to either the school bus or um, I would take in high school I would take the dash bus because mm-hmm. I was going to school like 7 a.m. because I didn't do my homework at night right <laughs> so I would my be there school early started at 7 I oh, see no my school started like, at like 8 30 we started but I know I was on the bus at 6 50 so yeah, yeah that's because they're stopping at all these kids houses and shit Jesus Christ exactly you some people spend like an hour on the bus just getting to school seriously if they're like that first stop or whatever and we got to stop at 20 other people's house and shit Chill. I'm telling you. I do not I miss the school this. bus. No, not at all. at all. It used to be fun after school, though. Like, after practice. But it was not the directly after school part, but I used to stay for sports and shit. So, like, that last bus yeah. um, before your parents had to be the ones to come get you, that bus is always fun. Everybody's all hyped from playing sports and shit and fucking ready to eat. If they hadn't already eaten, it just, yeah, it was a good time. All the fun athletes. <laughs> Talking about fun, y'all. We are about to go to Tales of the Cocktail. That shit is Tales back. Tales of the motherfucking cocktail. That shit is back. Less than two weeks away. Hey. Literally. Like, oh we're going to be there in like a weekend. A weekend some change. Yeah. On Sunday, I posted the two week mark. <sighs> so excited. I really am. I'm excited and I'm nervous. Mm, mm. Once I make it through Monday, I'm fine. <laughs> the panel part, I'm not as nervous about. No. It's the live recording because I just <laughs> care so much about it being like perfect. It's gonna be great. <laughs> I really want it to it's be. It's not perfect, gonna be perfect, so. but it's gonna be great. <sighs> <Okay. laughs> you are. You are. She's not. Cool. Just there's you no way correct. this is not gonna be our See, first yeah, live recording. We haven't recording. seen the venue before. It's our first live recording. Yeah, like there's no way. And so, what we could do is what we're doing here. Yeah. And act like we're on my couch at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. Main thing we get the we get in there a day early, so it's not like we're running from like what I did in Vegas. We're running from the airport straight to the, we get there a day yeah. early, so we can get into the venue. They said early we have so we can see. Yeah, they said we have technically I think like thirty or forty five minutes beforehand. I think it's thirty minutes, but I like love it if they gave us an hour, but okay. But like if we can see if we can go in and just sit, and we're gonna peak, have our yeah, media passes anyway, so yeah. we'll probably be able to get into. Anyway, sorry. Talk about our plan. Yeah, shit. sorry, y'all. <laughs> You see, this is a, this is where the nerves come in because my brain literally has this conversation alone. Like, so 
Oh, but yes, hello. You it is going to be me. great. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Um, and not only that, we're going to have a special guest down there on the show and be oh, able yeah, to check that. out. We're talk to her too. Yes. So we're this. I I I can't wait. I can't wait for the back behind the scenes stuff y'all going to get. I can't wait for the just like probably pop up interviews to watch out we might pop up on you and just be like yes. how's your time at tales exactly video. even That's if we right. just getting like a quick video on our phones yep. or whatever just gonna grab you it's gonna be I feel like we need to do that like while we oh, out yeah. in these we on the streets oh, and then we'll just make it an episode yeah fuck it. bitch yes yeah. okay yeah. i'm just like and even if it's, it's not an episode it's like something on our instagram and facebook True. that lives like it's whatever it reels yeah all this type yes. of stuff so okay i'm excited I'm um, excited. Yes, it's gonna be great. Cause it it's gonna be fun to look back, especially if we're like a little tipsy. Like yes. it's gonna be fun to be. My like, plan is to I'm just be time, bitch. tipsy <laughs> the whole week. I don't want to be super I'm not fucked to be, up. There's gonna be a night that I'm gonna be fucked up, but I'm not trying to do that shit the whole time. No, I want maybe one fucked up night. I, I I'm now, good for I'm good for one fucked up night because I need at least I need to be like it needs to be like in the middle too. Well, because I need to have one of those days where I can sleep it and, and like. <sighs> I'm trying to figure that out now because I keep saying yes to doing shit. So now I feel I like I'm working the whole so much fucking week, low key. Like, I'm not, like low key, I got Sunday. Hey, I'm not doing nothing. Yeah, and Monday, then Monday we record. We record Tuesday. I'm doing a pop up. Hasn't come out yet, but I'm doing the allegory pop up with nice. Mr. Black and, okay. uh, and Bacardi. I mean, with uh, Martini Rossi and, and Mr. Black Aperitivo Hour. Nice. Um, and then. Supposedly now I'll be working with Paul Taylor and Shira, who were the um, managers and directors of Columbia Room before it passed. But yes. now they're doing their own thing together. So Columbia Room is no more? No, Columbia Room is no more. Oh. A- absolutely not. They are now going to be Death and Company. <gasps> <laughs> yes. If you didn't oh. know, Death and Company is now a chain. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I know they went <laughs> West Coast. Yeah, like Colorado or some shit I think like we're that. The third or fourth? We're gonna location. be the third. Yeah, because so. they've got New York. I've been to the one in New York. I love the one in New York. I've never been to the West Coast one, obviously. Change the and name so, at least. It could be the, like I don't know. I just feel like bars. Should I don't be think bars should be chains. I chains. think if we're gonna be within the same bar group, like there are restaurant That's groups. That's so, like, Restaurant groups have different restaurants with different vibes, different names. And each city and has I a like different that. vibe. And each city's a different vibe. Now, I think Black and Alley is an appropriate place for a speakeasy like Death and Co. Though. Um, I mean, it, I mean it has room. that vibe. Yeah, exactly. Now, see, I only been to Columbia Room once, so I don't remember that much about it. Um, cause who did I go with? I think I went with Anisha. Funny enough, is that where we went? Anyway, yeah. Um, I think that was where we went, but um, I don't feel like that spot, that particular location. I mean, it. No, it's gonna it'll be great. work. I mean, it gives that dark and like that, you have like, to go through an alley to get there. I'm just, or like, I'm just, I'm just over. But I, shit. yeah, I'm not into like bars being chains. Are there no, other bar not. chains? Uh, Defco does it, and then. Um, but I mean, like cocktail, like like this type of bar, not like a Applebee's or something, like just a bar. There was something else that had that's it's on the fifties best list or something. Oh, we'll it figure is. it out. Oh, and they have multiple. I think so, but I'm just oh. like, Meh. Um, I don't want that to be a thing. Can we not make this a thing? Would it or not? Honorary? Not. Yeah, really. just just change. The I name. love that the company. I just learn the city that you're moving to and make it fit. Hire don't- the people in that city and 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 change the name. It's a very New York thing. Ugh. It's giving New York. It's all right. But, because um, New Yorkers feel like every other place should be like New York. Yeah. And so. Whatever. Yeah. New York, you know how I feel about you. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to be hopefully working with them. Um, and that's either Wednesday and Thursday or just Wednesday. Okay. Thursday I have the class panel thing. Mm-hmm. The one that. The and then hopefully Friday I'm not doing shit. <laughs> Once again. Yeah, okay, Friday, all- no, you're not doing shit. Once again, these are all like one off things. Like not everything yeah, is gonna be an hour like, or so out of your day. Yeah. But still, like the fact that I have to be like, oh, gonna run this time, we're gonna head over and do this. Well, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. We had a great time. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited. And all you're doing is building your brand, building your platform. Yeah, and showing so. my face. I'm okay. gonna have a great time. I'm gonna have a great time. I'm, I'm excited. excited that I'm gonna be here for a whole fucking week. Yeah, man. I need this. A whole fucking Definitely week. Definitely need this time. It's Can't Shantae's wait to see. Shantae's coming. Yeah. Shout out to Shantae. I miss Shantae. Um, Sister Rome Shantae. I can see my, my, my play niece. I'm excited. Who's your play niece? Um, Chrissy's daughter. Chrissy had a daughter. Chrissy, Chrissy, Chrissy. I have a Chrissy, best Chrissy. friend down there named Chrissy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, She okay. has a daughter. Oh, your playmates. Um, I had your so playmates. Then that's your niece, niece. Yeah. No, that's like, yeah. That's my baby. And then I haven't seen her since, I don't know, before she was one. So now she's one and something. Some change. Did she turn two? 
No, I think she's one. I don't know, child. She turned two. That's how. That's why it's a play news. Because child, don't. Look, I can't keep it. Ah, love it all. Love it all. Uh, love you to death. Just can't quite recall your age slash birthday, but either way. Sorry, shouty. Children are children. <laughs> there is okay, a two year old running around my warehouse right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about the silence. <laughs> I was not prepared. I wasn't prepared for that one. There's a what? Oh, shit. The Victoria's son. Okay. I had to come with her to work today. She dropped him off. And then the motherfucking daycare girl tells her, as she's already at work, that the AC is not working. So now she has to go back and retrieve her child. <laughs> Yeah, because you're not about and to have a child know how that's house. Yeah, no, house facts. Forever. But the bitch knew that the shit was on the fritz and still let her parents drop off their kids. And then has everyone has to then come back and get their child and figure out what they're going to do with them. Not everyone works remote. So no. it's the fucking child. Mm-mm. I can't. Mm-mm. I can't. Mm-mm. Children. Mm-mm. It's a, I, I'm if you've been keeping it up, you know there's many reasons. I should just start going Uncle Cliff on your ass and reason number 505.73. Like shit. <laughs> Is that niggas don't know how to act when they try to take care of kids. We just gonna keep it going and then we're gonna go back and clip them together on the 10 year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I say the amount of clink. Videos we're gonna have by the time we get to like episode 100. Because I'm saving every so clink joint. Like, so at least exciting. one of them I'm saving yeah, from great. every episode. So we'll have a nice little clink compilation. I love that. Ooh, yes. yes. The clinks through the ages. Oh, I can't read the Twerks mask. I was about to say it just brings us back to tales. So. <laughs> Can't, can't wait. wait to be in New Orleans. Shit. But for real, yes. NA, 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 trying to be NA all the way. Like. I am. Where can I get liars in DC? Have we established this yet? Did, did Nick ever say? Uh, did you ask him? I never asked him. <laughs> okay. No, I never asked him. Yeah, but because um, I, I want that, that damn around. prosecco and that cava like now. <laughs> we do. I might pack one in my suitcase if I need to. I don't. Oh no! But liars is gonna be down there though. Yeah, the, liars I, gonna be I down there. I got in touch with him about job opportunities. I forgot about where we could find it. Yeah. Um. Yes. If y'all need an ambassador. I actually like this shit enough that I can talk about it. So enough. Holla at your girl. Cause there ain't a bunch of shit I can really be an ambassador for. If I don't like it, I ain't, I ain't about to. I ain't about to try to sell it to you. Gotta be something you like. <laughs> Me personally. People can do it though. I can't. Sell That's why I only you. talk I about like the it. shit I feel strongly about. Period. Like, like. Oh yeah. By the way, I hate this shit. But here, can you buy seventeen? I hate this shit, but it might work for you though. Can you buy seventeen cases for me. <laughs> That's all, nah. all right, let's go second sip. Second, second. sip. Um, JJ Corey the Hanson. This is batch number two. Um, this is a celebration of Irish grain. The Hanson is the first blended grain Irish whiskey ever created. What? Oh. And per and the perfect way for us to showcase the rich- richness of grain cast in our flavor library. Nah, mm. nah, nah. It can't be ever created. It's probably ever created for them. I just don't believe that. It's the first blended grain Irish whiskey ever created. That's a very serious claim there. (laughs) I hope y'all are accurate Uh, on that. Okay. Uh, Developed specifically with the highball in mind. Okay. To make the Hanson, we selected four to 11-year-old grain whiskeys from multiple Irish distilleries and blended it to bring out notes of citrus, fruits, and spice. Okay, the we'll Hanson is named after J.J. Corey's son-in-law, who was the local whiskey tax collector in town. What a nice son-in-law to have, mm-hmm. okay. if y'all get along. J.J. Corey. Um, probably named him after him for a reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, 4 to 11 years, y'all. 46 ABV, so we're at 92 proof again. Okay. So, at least three of the four are 92 proof. Like, okay. I don't know green spots. Oh, yeah, son in law. How about I just uh, name this? I name this one after you, and yeah. Because you know about that tax, though. Oh, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's one thing we've learned is that wealthy white people know how to escape, evade some taxes. Excuse show. me? Mm, it's it's definitely, definitely giving more grain because it's like spicier. Definitely spicier. I'm still getting like white pepper. I was going to say, I'm still getting white. I'm still getting black pepper, too. It just smells bitey. It's prickly to my nose. Yeah. 
and not prickly like the pear, y'all. Yeah, no. I'm not uh, getting much fruit from this on the no, nose, that's actually. Not much I'm getting. Yeah. White and peppery. I'm Definitely tastes more green. Mm-hmm. Has a spicy, like, rye spice feeling to it. It yeah. does. Um, it's like a spicy like caramel. Like a... Yeah. Like if I... If I just did some fresh cracked pepper over, like, caramel. Yeah. It's given that. It's not much to Still waxy. Out of this. I actually want to water this one now. Yeah. Still it's waxy in texture. texture. Yeah. Mm. Over here. Mm, mm, mm. Drop me, baby. Give me, drop, drops. Hey, me drop, drops. drops. Hey, now give me drop, the drops. Hey, give me some drop, the drops. Hmm. More lemon came out of the nose with the water. A little lemon, not gonna lie, a little rubbery to me. Mm. On the nose. You, you know what? Yeah, nose. like one of those pink, or like a, I'm thinking of the pink rubber ball. Pink rubber balls. Wow, I haven't seen one of those in a while. I guess because I don't right. like play games <laughs> and stuff. Like, I don't even think of the last time I even saw one around. Like, what reason would I have to see it, I guess? No reason. No. <laughs> I'm totally done. The random shit we just stop seeing when we get older. Like a certain type of snacks. Oh, bitch, I don't see. There's so many snacks I don't see anymore, but I know they exist still. Like the grams we were talking about before, we were tasting something else. Never seen them. I was just about to say graham cracker here for it. Like, like mm. very. Like a cinnamon one? Like, very. Uh, sorry to say this, but like Walmart brand graham crackers. Not the best value graham crackers. <laughs> wow. Do they even have that? I don't know, but I'm just I don't like, know. it's like. <laughs> Oh, they, do they even make not the that? not the brand that you think you know? Not the blue box. Yeah, just not like those. graham crackers from like it's the like, grocery store. Like they made them. Yeah, because they're usually lighter in flavor, right? Yeah. And they're usually closer to like and this is no Sade. Closer to like cardboard. <laughs> but like with the essence of graham cracker. No, this doesn't taste like cardboard, so I'm not saying that, y'all. I'm just saying. But, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, in terms of the grade of graham cracker we're referring to, just to give y'all some context. But the spice is there. Mm-hmm. But it just is not... Mm. It's not as round as I want it to be. You know what it's giving me? It's giving me, like... That one gives me more artificial caramel. Yes. Yeah, like, better. yeah, like caramel flavoring. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think they added anything to this, y'all, so I'm not saying they did. I just think in no, terms of the type can't. of... Yeah, they legally they can't. So I'm just saying that to say, like, that is the realm of caramel that this is sitting in yeah. on the palate. Um, but it's not giving too sweet. It's just giving, no, like... No, it's not the most pleasing aftertaste. Yeah. Yeah. And the finish is, like, kind of... Uh, short i guess but like the like spices. it's short in the middle say the spice just sits in the very back of yeah. my tongue exactly so i guess it's long i guess but i mean if we're going if we're going wsct technically finish has to do with Overall, the length that the pleasant flavors last right so but i like the spice that's, so that's pretty medium very subjective it, like is it is subjective it is subjective i like because what somebody finds pleasant is going to differ jesus <sighs> reason why <laughs> that's why it's so a hard, hard. to grade somebody on exactly like. period and, but i think though um this is batch number two so i'm excited to see what the batches after this as they as yes, they evolve yeah. we definitely know that this is um they all have wooden tops they all have wooden tops huh. <laughs> look at that well they've all got corks cute. yeah cute um, and not all bottles have corks, just in case y'all were thinking that was random and weird. It was. Not, not all no. not all bottles some, have corks. I'm twist. struggling right now because not all bottles are being corked well. And it's hot as fuck this summer. Oh, yeah. And some rush is going to California and New Orleans and Arizona and, like, all these hot-ass states and popping in transit because of the heat being left on a truck too long or whatever, whatever. So our breakage rates right now are, like, not good not even breakage just spillage because yeah. corks are popping and they're losing liquid which means they either have to get a refund or replacement or whatever so, so it's just things. not great no, and seals not are breaking and like popping open it's just 
because if, if they're, they're only doing like a like, like one, one little adhesive you know how it goes mm-hmm. if they only do one of those little adhesives over it yeah what else is really gonna stop it like we need the plastic shrink wrap like i'm gonna need y'all distilleries to get hip and just plastic shrink wrap it all stop being cheap because just do it. It's just, it's not traveling well. Yeah. It's not traveling I well. Hate that. Shrink wrap your shit. I hate that. I hate that. Um, so, what are it all, y'all? What, what, what Question for all? you and for everybody to think about. When does a, holding accountability fall on you? So, like, when when do you need, is, do you need to be accountable all the time? Is everything for you to be accountable for? Now, break it down for me when you say accountable break it down for us I'm so, like give us some context i would say you know it could be so many things right mm-hmm. is if you feel as though that the places that you eat at the t- people that you support the, the things that you're doing is it on you to say when they should be accountable for making sure that they are creating safe spaces they mm-hmm. are using safe spaces that they are you know not uh being um what's the word i'm looking for um very um thin on the first layer what is the word i'm looking for surface surface yeah like just doing um very like surf surface surface level level, not advocacy but like the word i'm performative performative Performative. there we go when they're not being like making sure that things that you are aligning yourself with aren't being performative when does the accountability fall on you to say something And does it always like, or if, if now, the that's my thing. Is, does it always, I was going to say that the question is, is it always on you to say something? Like, right. That's a great question. Cause I don't really know how, I, how any one individual could manage to hold everything and everybody everything all the time and everyone <laughs> accountable, every group, every venue, every bar, every restaurant, every brand. Like how does one individual be responsible for Or is it just saying these- something once and just like, I said something. Well, here's what I feel like. Here's what I feel like. I feel like we all are accountable for speaking on what we feel strongly about. I think if you feel strongly about making sure that the spaces you occupy are safe spaces for black people, then you have a responsibility to to be as aware as you can be because we don't know what we don't know until we know it. So being as aware as you can be about a space you're going to be spending an extended amount of time or going to be lending your name yeah. towards or whatever. And I want to say this is for anything like black people, LGBTQIA, anybody who disabled, is marginalized, fat. anybody that's marginalized, women, marginalized you know. or call themselves an ally to marginalized groups. Mm, yeah. Anybody under that umbrella. Right. Exactly. If you feel strongly about it, then that's when you say something about it. I feel like if you don't feel that strongly about it, there's no you're being performative and saying anything. About it. Now, I think it gets a little nuanced when it's like you may not feel as strongly about it, but someone you know or care about feels really strongly about it, mm-hmm. and so it's like, well, I care about them and their experience, so <sighs> then do I now? Then is it now important to me? Like, uh, okay, and I like think that that. Yeah, is is it important to you? Like, I think for me, things do become important to me when I feel as though somebody can't support me because of something or be around me because of something or something like that. Yeah. I'm like, well, let me figure some shit out. I was going to say, because this current situation, we ain't going to get into it too deep with y'all. Yeah, but maybe after we get, let's wait till after Tales, maybe. But, but yeah, I guess it's uh, not that big of a deal well, because it's, not, it's, it's, it's already, already out public. there. So, okay. yeah, I can yeah. talk about this. It's situation. already out there in these streets. Never mind. Yeah. Um, so, where this question came up was. Um, we have a great friend, Tere. Shout out to Turn the Tape. <laughs> Turn the Tape. Turn the Tape. Uh, who is, uh, I believe, the executive director for Turning Tables. And he um, used to work for the Ace. And we've also heard Ash and Barry speak out against the Ace, too. I don't know if you have, but I haven't. I hadn't even. Uh, she used to do the beverage program there. And they have oh. both spoken out about, you know, their harm within this place. Tere got um, arrested. Um, I can't remember the exact reasons, but we can put the link that went on on yeah to his Instagram. We'll guys, share the post yeah, with we'll, y'all. The link is down below about um more details about this, and I wish I could be more of a podcaster and tell you things, but I'm not a radio host, so it doesn't have to be <laughs> specific. <laughs> That's the beauty of podcast. <laughs> um, but um, I 
thought it would be great to start a group on um, WhatsApp just for if you're black and brown and you're going to Tails and you want to be in a group, let me yeah. know. Reach out to me. I'm putting everyone in it um, that wants yeah. to be in it and people that it's are It's a suggest- great group so far. Yeah, and what we're doing is we're just posting opportunities that are happening at Tails. Trying to get This is the way you get more black and brown faces out there. Getting people that have the opportunities with people that are looking for the opportunities and putting them in one place. Bringing them together. And bringing exactly. them together. It and fucking so exactly. that's what we're doing. And, you know, also just conversating and having a good time, showing RSVPs, you know, being excited. Yeah, sharing events so we can all mob to the same places. Mob, mob, you know. And then even when we get down there. Because that monkey show the party, we mob. <laughs> yeah. And it was great. <laughs> we're going to mob again multiple times. It was um, great. And it's just about having fun and, you know, and just getting black and brown folks in one place yep so i'm having a panel on thursday that i was talking to you about earlier mm-hmm. and i just saw someone posted the link i didn't even get the link by the way y'all Dang. i'm in the email with these people and i didn't even get the link i saw the link online so i'm like oh great our link is out and i was like great i'm gonna be talking i copied and i shared it in our ccc ccb group um and <laughs> as soon as i as soon as i shared it Ture was like, don't fucking go to those events. Don't go to anything at the Ace Hotel. You know, they've harmed me. I was arrested back in uh, a few years ago because of them. That was wrongfully arrested, mind you. So they put a black man in the harm's way of the police department. And we already know Um, how that go. And the comments from there just go through a lot of other people and a lot of other um um, had bad, bad experiences. Back, yeah. bad experiences. People who worked for them who said them. they made they created an, um, a hostile work environment for black people yes. working there. Yes. Like, uh, so something it was a lot. about it's, yeah, it goes to the point of like um, debutante things using black people as slaves, working them as slaves. It was weird shit going on in this hotel. So I was like, fuck. Like he had told me this before, and this is another thing that we had, I was talking to her about. Is just kind of like when things. It sucks that we live in a world where things that don't happen so close and you don't have to live that with that every day, you it slips your mind. So for me, I didn't even look at the video when I posted the clip. Secondly, it 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 wasn't the first thing on my mind, and that's now yeah. because of the incidents, it will like ace, fuck ace. It will always be fuck ace. Yeah. But like it wasn't as hugely written on me. Mm-hmm. Um, even after he had already told me this about a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, and all this information went out during 2020 when Ace Hotel put Black Lives Matter up on their Instagram. Mm. Um, and there were so many comments <laughs> contradicting the, the the idea that they gave a fuck about Black <laughs> because Lives. Because they don't. And, um, and, you know, he puts everything, he puts all the references and stuff like that about, like, just go look. This I've talked about this. And I was like, you know what? Fuck them for sure. And I immediately went to the point of, like, it's already two weeks away. This is where my mind went. It's already two weeks away from Tales of the Cocktail. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just going to be there for an hour. Like, really sucks that my mind went here, but it did. It was like, I will see. I, was I like, for the sake of the fact that it was a panel that you were on, me and Shantae was going to be going anyway. You know, I was like, I don't, I can walk in and out of the building. I don't have to patronize. I don't have to buy a drink. I don't have to buy food. I don't have to do stay there longer than this panel goes on for. Right. So I was like, push come to shove, I'm there for an hour. Okay, great. I don't have to tell anybody. But I was going to support my friend, though. <laughs> so, so, anyway. And, and, you know, that's where this question comes in that at, uh, aspect. But I also put in the group, I was like, I understand if nobody shows up. Like, I am very okay with nobody can come because this building ain't shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, but I also was like, I'm going to say something. So I... Was just like, what's the harm in saying anything? Just to let them know, hey, this place. Because for me, it's also that you they were doing these classes so that people had an opportunity to, to go to something that's free. Yes, yeah, that's the that was the draw is that it was free it's education free for during us. tales. Yeah, and it's about like a lot of things that if you're trying to run something or you're looking for leadership positions and different things like that, you can get these pointers and yeah. conversations that will help you grow. Yeah. So at the end of the day. If black people don't feel comfortable coming into a building that this all this free information is going to be in, I should probably say something. Yeah. So I said something. I did. I I I, I went to the group that I'm in. I said, came to my knowledge that we're having this in the Ace Hotel. The Ace Hotel um, has been very problematic and very harmful to the black people of New Orleans. And you know, if we have these classes here, we will not. You know, my peers, other black folk. Um, and myself won't feel comfortable and safe walking into this building. Yeah. And because I said something, they were like, we're looking for a new venue. We're, well, I'll let you know what the new venue is. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Yeah. Da-da-da-da-da. 
Um, I'm glad they were so they were so responsive. Yeah, I I was these people were recommended to me from a mentor of mine, Dwayne. So I really actually have no real relationship with them. So this was really great to see. Yeah, that moving forward, I should and it probably wasn't made a keep. hard thing. Yeah, like it wasn't oh, made a hard too thing. Sad. I don't know what we can do. But see how tra- traumatized I was from those types of experiences mm-hmm. that I immediately went to like. They're probably going to say, no, I know how these things work. Yeah. Uh, so I'm so glad that they kind of broke that, like, what you were expecting. They they didn't do what you expected. And it, so. made, it started my day off well today to have that, which also now motivated me to be like, oh, now I get to tell, and now we get to do this, and now mm-hmm. I get, you know, like, these things. I, I told Teray today, I said, I doubted myself when I put that out there. Even though I put it out there, I doubted it 100%. And I said, I need to be more confident. You doubted how effective it would be. Yeah. I have to be more confident in these and in, in, in moving. And, you know, my words have power. And I, ha- I know that. But I've been in a, in a funk that, like, I was just, I was still just doing things almost autopilot for the past week or so. Mm-hmm. And it's just, like, to feel that confirmation of people are still thinking about the real work and still responding to actual things and i think people good. know that i think people also know that you're going to use your voice which kind of adds the pressure for you to be consistent in using your voice so i get coming it. back to our question it, coming back to the question <laughs> yeah exactly because i feel like people also know like if they were to have a piss poor response to it or a lackluster response or like they just didn't give a shit i think it is a thought in people's minds that like their response can very well it is very well going to be shared, whether it was good, bad, or indifferent. And so I didn't like, even think about you, that. Like the, yeah, the other side of that response could have been like they gave a bunch of excuses why they can't change the venue right now. But, and and it's like, oh, but thank you for letting us know. Bitch, boom. And so then that could have been the message communicated in our group chat to, of like almost 40 people. Um, as opposed to we're changing the venue. Hooray, hooray. Right. And so it could have gone either way. I think it's better to be on the right side of that. <laughs> I think it, it would behoove anybody to be on the right side of that. Period. So uh, it could go either way for real. But, I mean, it's just about what you give a shit about. Obviously, we give a shit about Torre. Yeah. Um, and so if they're creating hostile. And then we've been in so many fucking hostile environments where they just treated black people like, why the fuck are you here? Child. And I'm going to do everything possible to make you as uncomfortable as possible. That's so true. So, and then for, it was the arresting for me. So I'm glad you did say something because yeah. when he said that he wound up getting like wrongfully arrested because yes. of whatever had taken place there, like I don't play about that police shit. Yeah. I don't play about that. We are getting murdered by them. So by, so you to put that in the, in, no. No. So, yeah, I'm glad all's well that ends well. I'm happy about someone that. Someone in the group was like, what the fuck? This is one thing I did. Someone in the group was like, what the fuck? Um, black people, like, black people run NOLA. Black. And I was like, and so does racism. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say. Where there's a shit ton of black people, there will be a shit ton, ton of racism. racism. Like, that's For just sure. There's going to be works. white people like, pulling the strings behind the scenes to try to keep us in control and in our place as much as possible. Even though we influence everything is. and we... Right we heal and we we fucking set the standards for and all this around everything that's exactly why there are so many especially policy influencers and stuff like that that make it a point to try to hold on to the the places of power that they do control in order to keep us in our place because there's so much that we do actively run living our day-to-day lives absolutely i mean that's just what it is so i was just like yeah hold on the <laughs> <laughs> i'm like y'all gotta understand and Boom. like like just i mean also just new orleans being a different that was a different European new orleans is a different beast i was gonna say new orleans is a different slavery, beast you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. that was they have a they, I feel like they're really it was the French and who else occupied New Orleans? Uh, it was the French in another country. Yeah. I can't remember because I just was but still, reading all about this at all the that fucking African American right Museum. The way that they keep there's so much in New Orleans. There's so much spiritually hodgepodgey, and um, mm. it's probably one of the one one of the reasons that I'm very attracted to the attracted place. To it. Um, because I just feel like there's so much to unpack there, but also the way that black people love down there, mm-hmm. you know, that they still feed so much of the, 
just yeah. the energy and spirit in the city. It, oh, for it, sure. It doesn't feel like it's It still like amazes me that people want to live in New Orleans with all of the natural disasters that happen there. <laughs> you got to really be about your city. You got to, not even just that, like, you have to be prepared to traumatically go through a depression every year. <laughs> like, just because either you're scared or this could be it or it's a real ass it's a real commitment it's a real commitment I, I will only move down there if I have shit somewhere else locked down ready to fucking evacuate to yeah I gotta when evacuate when need be cause it ain't if need be under the constant evacuation plan but I wanna live down there mm-hmm. even if it's for a year and I'm like oh fuck this shit but who knows <laughs> I don't think that's true fuck this I don't shit. think that would be true for me at all but that's that's in my oh wow but yeah so <sighs> Accountability. I think it's all kind of in the air. Yeah, I just feel like, at least the way I rationalize it for myself, I feel responsible for holding people accountable for the shit I feel strongly about. Yeah. Like, that's real. if I know that a fucking a particular place that I've either gone to or about to go to, whatever, like a restaurant or bar or whatever, or hotel even, because I spend more time in hotels and things, um... If I know that they have a reputation for treating people poor, like I had not, I had never been to, what's that bar we went to off the late night, one of them nights, and they had all that bullshit happen like some years ago. Fuck. It's copycat? Copycat. Mm. I never walked in a copycat mm. after that shit had happened with those girls and how they were treated. Yeah. I never went until you went. I was like, oh, Capri, one of them must be fine to go now. Yeah. Those people must they, be gone. Yeah, they, the people are gone. And, and so I feel like th- that's. Just one of those ways just in living my regular life that I'm able to hold people accountable. You just won't get my fucking dollars. Yeah. And I won't speak your fucking name. I won't recommend anyone to go to you. Right. And I get a lot of people to ask me questions on where to go drink. Period. Yeah. And so your name will never come up because yeah. of this bullshit. Yeah. And so, I mean, everybody's just got to have their convictions. I don't give a fuck how great you shake a cocktail. There's a lot of that in D.C. We have a fabulous bar scene. So I have my plethora of options. Yeah. Exactly. So, and I like to go where I know people behind the bar anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> nine times out of ten, if I know somebody behind the bar, they're not dealing with no bullshit. Mm-hmm. And so, it's easy for me to just filter Beep. that shit out that way. <laughs> so, I mean, it's all about your convictions. How much do you really care? I don't remember drinking and, my tequila. Like, to what you said, how much? You finished it? <laughs> oh, oh you finished your tequila. I didn't remember. <laughs> it evaporated that fast. <laughs> I don't remember that. It was like, how much do you care? Hey, how much are you really about what you say about it? Say you're about. And back to your your kind of inner conflict that you were having just about doubting your voice. How much do you feel like your voice matters? A lot of people don't say anything even if it grinds their gears because they feel like their voice doesn't matter enough. If, like They don't feel like it's going to reverberate loud enough. That's wrong. And so they just say nothing. We'll say something, y'all. I was going to say, meanwhile, if everybody just said something, it's going to be loud either way if enough people are saying something. Yeah. So. Just say it, y'all. Say it. Just say it. Yeah. Say it. Don't spread. Say it. Get it done. Get it done. Hold these hoes accountable. Per. Per. What else? You got random questions? Let's go. Bitch, yes, I do. You already know. I was scouring the brain I shall not name because they're not sponsoring anything. Friends edition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's on a couple interesting questions. Okay. How have I changed, if at all, since we first met? Mm. I don't wouldn't say it would be you changing of just me being more aware of who you are. So I don't think it would be change. Um, I definitely think you're less. For me, I love D going out D. Like I love all D. I love you all the time. But like when you're out and like really feeling like good energy around you, you are not as shy or not as off putting as you know it would be. I think it definitely mm-hmm. depends on the crowd. But yeah, it's for nice sure. to see when like when we went to the. Um, when we went to the uh, go-go thing and you met that Taurus girl. Yes, I love her. You need K girl. Y'all really hit it off. So for me, I just like, oh, like, I don't know. Like, at first, of course, it was that feeling of like, maybe she is an off-putish type person. Like, it's just like, fuck it. Like, I don't want to talk to, like, 
get into this with people and then i thought it was a friendship thing which is still it is mm-hmm. but it really is just like what kind of energy we around. is around yeah for sure and i was kind of eavesdropping on her conversation if I, and but she was saying that i told her that i was eavesdropping though but when she said that she was there by herself i was like oh that's my type of bitch okay. so i just kept listening because i like people who have a good time out by themselves absolutely i don't like no awkward i gotta be tethered to a person type of type of person because i'm not that person yeah me neither like if i show up with somebody i make sure we leave together or whatever unless we you know obviously stuff happens and we arrange otherwise but i'm a very come together leave together but also be able to work the room separately type of person absolutely and so i was like oh, okay so i perked up my ears and so just like the same like with you and all the friends that i've hand selected um yes literally. i just had a good feeling about her so i was like oh, i talk to her i mean see she's by here by herself that means she's open to meeting people and so we just sparked up conversation and we wound up like and i'm glad i did because i'm usually a little off put by taurus women so i'm glad that i didn't like I'm like, oh, she's a Taurus. Let me not. So I was like, well, let's see. I don't know what else is in her chart. Yeah. So I was happy. <laughs> and then I happened to find out she's a fucking licensed therapist. Oh, wow. And so that was definitely a manifestation because that, yes. along with I need lawyer friends, I was like, I need some therapy friends. Yes. <laughs> like, I need people who just have a certain level of emotional and intellectual intelligence that just get it. Absolutely. And know how to, like, because I don't mind somebody telling me about myself if it's packaged right. Mm-hmm. I'm not above reproach. I'm not above evolution. I'm always looking for ways to improve. Yeah. But I am not about a person thinking that they know me. Right. And just telling me, no. Yeah, me neither. Not that girl. So, I feel like therapists, at least good ones, are great at just turning the mirror on you without jamming it in your face <laughs> and so i want friends like that i have yeah. friends like that yeah. but you know i want all my friends to be like that basically yeah so i was like oh she's a therapist yeah. like thank god so then we start talking about all types of shit child it just was child she was like you're a trip <laughs> It's like, yeah, I know, I'm a little, I'm a little nuts. Oh, that's okay. I know, we all I'm are a little nuts, nuts. But, but thankfully, they, you're comfortable around nuts and people. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, what you're doing. Yeah. So I guess yes. I'm very much. I love environments like that mm-hmm. where I can just gen, like organically just meet, meet people. Yes, absolutely. And then, and then everyone behind the bar, Metro Bar is great. So I was just already oh my in God. a good we, mood. Yes, like they they had really a great episode right with Erica. Yeah. So and then we mobbing yes. to Metro Bar. <laughs> We twerk into some motherfucking oh, go-go. Yes. Like, so it was definitely the right environment for me to just feel comfortable. Absolutely. It's mainly about comfortability. That's real. That's real. And, and yeah, yeah. Just noticing that about you, you know, it, it isn't like, that's not who you are. It's really just about being able to open up. And once you open up, how how much you love to connect to people and really yeah, learn Yeah, that is something I keep new. super guarded in spaces yeah. I don't feel comfortable in. I'm very much like, I'll just sit and observe. You are very much an explorer, though, you know? And yeah. I think that's something that I'm learning new about you. But I don't know about changes. Like, I would say change-wise, I don't know. We've always had a easy time talking to each other so I, yeah. I really can't say anything i feel like we've really tried to communicate as much as possible yes which i love <laughs> so, have some so very communicative like, friends yeah at least my two my two shante and capri <laughs> we communicate we were very trying well. to talk we were trying to talk it out so i don't think in terms of you i don't think you've changed much i feel like i've definitely been watching you like evolve and kind of owning like that boss side of you that like being in control of something you really care about and like just navigating those waters like that side of you i've definitely just watched grow because i met you like right before you started Chuck right Bus. so that journey definitely changes a person yeah um definitely. just in ways where you kind of access different parts of yourself so witnessing that has been fab um but i also feel like overall minus like the funk you've been in and like that type of stuff but overall like happier since i first met you i definitely yeah i think once being in your own space of course i'm sure definitely like helps helps a (laughs) lot for sure and just having that like because once you moved into your own space it was like hitting the ground running with like not sharing bills with anybody i'm not like this is it's me (laughs) there is no going back home (laughs) don't want a roommate (laughs) not sure if i ever want to live with another partner so (laughs) All it's that shit. it's me, <laughs> and so there's a different kind of thing that comes with that too. But I think it, it feels like at least 
like you wouldn't change that no. for anything. So that being in a space that you wouldn't change, even if you could, inevitably is going to make you feel happier or at least more at peace with where you are, regardless of the ups and downs that come with just life, lifeing. Um, just being at peace with where you are in the space from which you navigate all the other things. So yeah, I think I that'd be that. the only thing that's like change, changed. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. Well said. Okay. Yes. Into it. Well <laughs> Into it. <laughs> Okay. Is if there is one thing I don't understand about you, what is it? That you don't understand about And that's an if. It may it may be that you feel understood already, but I don't know. I would I would say maybe that you that don't like understand about me. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. I guess I I would say that. No, kind of understand that about me too. <laughs> Just like you know, I share a lot of my insecurities with you, and like mm-hmm. a lot of like things that get me like nervous and stuff. So it's hard to say exactly what it might be, but. Uh, you know I need my alone time. Mm-hmm. You know I need to just like disappear sometimes, like. I don't know. Um, um, uh, you are no, that's great. So you feel pretty <laughs> well understood. I'm like you know that I like be a good ghetto time child. Girl, yes. I like a good ghetto punch. Like <laughs> I'm like what? Yes. Like I'm like what is it that you don't understand? You you know a lot about my sex life. Like yeah, I don't really feel like there's much about like, me you don't understand. I so. would say maybe just like my insecurities with finances. Like I I have a big insecurity mm-hmm. about financial lifing and like what that looks like and because i don't do it as well as i want to so mm-hmm. i think that's a big thing that just comes with like you're not telling everybody really like yeah bitch, you know i'll be broke though i'll be broke like <laughs> but <laughs> it's just like you know i would say that's one thing that i try to keep close to me now the world knows um but <laughs> because it's like you know you always want to have that feeling of having your shit together no matter yeah. what. Like, oh, I could do that. I feel like I that's that. the world. Yeah, you know. It's like. I'm very good at, like, paying for things I want to do in advance. Mm-hmm. But that's that money gone. And then, like, my day-to-day is definitely. Is where you, like, make the, life, you know? the cuts. Yeah. But I'm okay because my rent's paid. My flight's paid for. The essentials are, so, like, are covered. The, the shit that matters the most, yeah. you basically make sure it's covered. Yeah. So <laughs> and figure that's, out the rest. You know, I'll get a few groceries and make to the next two weeks. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I do, um, would probably say that's something you don't understand about me. Is that my fear of financial, like literature? No, I'm not fe- fearing financial literacy. My, my lack of financial literacy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm scared to show as much as I, as I do. Uh, I see what you're saying. I think that's where I was getting at. Oh, well, girl, mine ain't much better. If I wasn't married to a motherfucking accountant. Listen, I'm going to try to manage slash auditor. for myself. I'm not going like, to lie. Like, like, I don't want a relationship, but I do need a person that does these, 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 this, this, <laughs> and that. Because she, she makes me feel financially illiterate. <laughs> I feel like, oh, my God, I thought I was doing so great with having my little savings. Yeah. Like, my little savings That's is good. not shit compared to this fucking spreadsheet. <laughs> And all this bullshit, because I don't, what I'm bad at is tracking what I spend. Oh, man. I'm not a tracker. Me neither. I just, the money's I mean, there, there. And I just spend, and I have like a threshold that I want to, don't want to go, go below or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. But, but that's, that's as far as my brain really yeah. wants to think about it. I'm that's really good. not trying to go that deep into the rabbit hole of it all, because my brain just doesn't. It's not computing. That computing. Do that, and my brain's not computing like that. No. And I can't even try to train it to go that way. It's not. I'm very much somewhere in between left and right brain, like Mm. where certain numbers and all that out crunching is fine. It's cool. I got that little bit of pragmatism there, but then the rest is still very artsy, abstract, like approach to life. And I just, I see the vision in my head. I don't always know how to say it out loud or write it down or like put it in numbers or add a budget to it or whatever. And so she's very much like the opposite. She has the vision, but then she's also like, itemizing everything every piece that puts that vision together <laughs> whereas i'm like oh i have this vision i buy all the shit and i'm like oh this is what i spent whereas she's yeah. like this is what it's gonna cost <laughs> i'm i'm not there yet at all and you know and, and that's not what i need to be that's fine i just need somebody in my life that does it that that's does just it. i really that's it that is it like i will if i can find i mean it will take years of trust but trust enough somebody to just be like and you just handle my finances. I am okay with that. 
<laughs> I really am. I want to do this. Make sure I can figure out how to do this. Like, that's all I want. Yeah. That's really all I want. I feel you on that, but we manifesting that. Like, you help me also. You help me invest. You help me do these things so that things are constantly flowing. I'm still, I'm definitely trying to get more into the headspace of, like, um, multiple incomes, multiple incomes, multiple incomes. Me too. I'm just like, you do that very well. I'm still trying to get to my seven streams. I don't know how I'm about to do it. But see, I have a, you know, talk today with somebody that should be helping me out because like loving allegory, it's get, it's right where I need it to be, to be okay. Yes. But I need more outside of allegory and I need to do, I can't keep doing my one-offs. I can't keep doing like, Oh, I got a project here. I got a project there. I need need something that is actually coming back. Repeat it. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Trying to find more ways to create. I guess that's something income. you don't understand about me. Now you do. So like that's that's I never it. understand it all. Yep. Ah <laughs> yes. And if you don't, you know I'm gonna say it immediately. Exactly. exactly. So if it's not understood, it will be. <laughs> it just that's not how it comes out. It just how it comes. Oh my god, Kevin was like, you just don't hold anything to. I said, I don't do I. I'm, and what of it? At I least confess, you would never I confess confused. my love to a man named Kendrick, guys. You said that you loved him. I did. And is it like romantic love? It's just like I've never said I loved him, and like I, I lo- like I love my friends. It's mm-hmm. it's a bit romantic also, but it's definitely more. I've never said I loved you in general of like I care about you, yeah. type of thing. So I finally said it. And what was his response? Was that off? off he finally talk? called me. In, in, uh, two oh, this days is later. a text. No, I said it to him in person. I can't remember what he said in person. Oh, he drunk. And then, God, he was drunk. <laughs> Okay. You were drunk, but you meant it. Yeah, and then you know he waited two days. He, maybe he needed to process. Some people have to process. Some people have to process. It wasn't something you know. Because love's not a small I, thing. I followed it up with, I know that I told you I loved you tonight, and I also know that I told you my insecurities with that, just to show y'all how I am. My bitch just be like, blah, 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 blah. and I'm not gonna act like I didn't say it, and we're not gonna <laughs> go around it and act like, oh, it's just a drunk night. We're not gonna. Nope. I know that it's happened. I remember. So I just so you know, just so you know, and just so that you okay. know that I know I'm that okay you know. With nobody saying anything back, like I understand. <laughs> but that. he did call you. Yeah, okay. He what did he say it back? <laughs> he did say it back. He did. Okay. <laughs> Should I ask that? Is that okay to ask? Damn. Like, <laughs> he said back, and I think also the very friendship I care for you type love, which I'm okay. Great. I'm cool with that. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. I'm cool. here for it. It's the love for me. I'm never mad at that. Yeah, fuck it. Because what's the? Because well, honestly, what's the worst that can happen? Nothing. I love you. Really? Like what? One like, person you. feels more love to this world. Great. Great. So now you got it. Now you got it. Okay, but wait. What about you? What, what don't I understand? I don't feel like there's much you don't understand about me. Honestly, I think. I mean, if anything, I think we just haven't done a ton of talking about like. Like childhood stuff, I guess. Like we don't talk a ton about that. Like I feel like if there's anything that I don't like know a ton about you, like because we talk about it in small increments, just based on the context of whatever the conversation is. But like we haven't had like an in depth like how my childhood was talk, like or, or like childhood through like teenagery like type of stuff. So I really, if anything, that's really it because it's just that's one of the areas we don't talk a ton about. But that's because we're so busy adulting. It's like who really has time to sit there and reminisce about high school and shit? For real, mind. like it got me here. <laughs> exactly, like I am who I am now. Yeah. <laughs> like okay, fuck it, we'll put some water in it because I feel very understood in terms of who I am now. Nice, awesome. So yeah, that's really it. Yeah, but that's but true. I don't really I don't feel like misunderstood that. in that regard. It's just yeah. we don't talk about it in depth, so you wouldn't you wouldn't really know. No, and so that's it. Yeah, now you play like you you play uh lacrosse. Know that you're athletic. Uh, yeah. And then, see, yeah, even in those like little stories, there's little nuancey stuff <laughs> that has formed who I am. Yes. Even some of those like insecurities or things that have kept me more reserved or whatever. Also, when he's done, he's gonna. Sorry, I'm like no, reading. I'm getting things. work text. Yes. Still <laughs> recording. But yeah, <laughs> no, but yeah, that's it. I think those things will come up when they do. You know, I think it always comes up in in reference of why. 
we're reacting to something the way we're reacting to it's, yeah, or it's just like, like reminiscent like i don't really i don't think we'll ever need to be like so girl tell me about the first grade like i'm like <laughs> yeah, no. no i don't need to do that with you yeah, no we're okay no. it's fine <laughs> don't oh god to. Unless, i feel like organically unless, that you know, stuff will... then when you have your child maybe we'll talk about it more probably because it's probably going to trigger a lot of childhood stuff that, that i'm that not even that i'm not even going to be able to anticipate and we're going to need to face it <laughs> and I feel like this is a great segue into the last question. Okay. You saying that about me having a kid. Because that kind of ties into my answer. So okay. describe one experience you wish we'll, we will have in the future. Oh. So it's kind of a manifestation question. Um, I wish that we will get it. Our first million dollars together for something. Oh yes, love that. Um, I want to manifest that wish. Manifest. I manifest that we will get awards for our our podcasting. Ooh, love together. that. Okay. Want to manifest that we'll make our glassware soon. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I just this whole all the things. And then I also get this money. Manifest that you know we travel outside of the country once a year together. Love that. Ooh, I love that. Okay. Oh Lord. Okay. People just leave and left and right. All right. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> Let me just not even stress myself. Let me see. Okay. So one that I really not even wishing for because I know it'll be. I just can't wait until I have a kid and you're like a full on auntie because I'm not gonna give you a choice. <laughs> Because my kids are going to be on my fucking hip. I don't care how, but unless I'm like at a bar or something, right? Like, unless there's clearly not a place for children. Because I don't believe bring your kids to bars and shit or a place that's known for its bar. Like, keep that shit. Keep that family shit in a family restaurant. Keep that in a family restaurant. But I just can't wait to see Capri, like, have, holding my little infant baby. That's what Chrissy did to and me, like, too. Yeah. The whole picture of us. And she was like, here. I was like, yeah. you're going to feel all these feels, bitch. Absolutely. Baby in my arms. And I'm literally like, <laughs> in the picture. Because like, I'm yeah. sitting at the bar pregnant, drinking no ABVs, <laughs> having me some non alcoholic cop and Prosecco, bitch. I'm yes. still going to be very much me. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Eating all the good bar food. Exactly. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. like, so, Regardless. yes, I am. I just can't wait until I, because I'm almost itching, mm -hmm. feeling the I'm ready for a baby itch almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, until I see the older versions, like I see a two year old, and I'm like, I can wait. I, I'm dealing with teenage boys in my house. I'm like, I can wait. Okay, I can wait. And so I'm like toggling between. Oh, I just want to feel cute baby cheeks and smell the baby heads, and like, oh, I can wait. That lasts for like literally a month, a year and a half. And then they're running around, and, and then they're running everything. fucking rampant. And then you have to like make Reason sure they don't number hit all the corners. Point five. Um, <laughs> not gonna have kids. The kids really don't know how to fucking listen for a second. There's a moment oh. that they just don't listen, bro. Like there is nothing you can say that child's gonna do what it wants. It's just literally gonna do what it's, it wants. What, it's gonna do what it wants. And because of that, you now have to alter your whole life to make sure that every space that you are in is safe as fuck. And like the anxiety of that. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, child. I Sorry, can't. excuse my facial yeah. expressions, two birds. I'm just Lord. Yes, one day there will be children running around. <sighs> one day we'll be millionaires and I will have two max babies. Yeah. And <laughs> we'll have all seven plus streams of income. Yes. I am all the way here Period. for that. Ooh, okay, let's Period. do our third sip. Oh, third sip. Okay, this is another one Ooh. I brought out. Y'all, this is the green spot. Yes. Yes, Capri had the bottles this time, y'all. Our bottles. Um, okay, so green spot whiskey. So cool thing about this, this was the first high-end Irish whiskey that I was like, wow, I really love this style of whiskey. Uh, yeah. green spot and yellow spot was really just like my my like oh yeah i know i know irish whiskey yeah I, it was just I knew, I knew those um it was originally produced exclusively for the mitchell family who commenced trading in 1805 on 10 grafton street in the heart of dublin city as purveyors of the fine wines and confectionery if you know about Dublin, I guess that means a lot to you. Um, <laughs> you. Four generations you. later, the company is still in the wine and spirits business under the stewardship of Jonathan Mitchell and his son, Robert. Great family, family. That's what I love about this. And, I, and for those that are starting their distilleries now, 
this is the type of shit your family will be saying in 200 years. Like, that's what I love about spirits and family passed down spirits and different things like that. Like, people really keep that shit in the family. Um, unless you're trying to, you know, buy the world and then you, you reach out to other people. But <laughs> the Mitchell family expanded into whiskey bonding in 1887, whereby they sent empty wine, sherry, and port cast via horse and cart to the local Jameson distillery, which were then filled and returned to the Mitchell cellar warehouse. Mm. Huh. There, the whiskeys matured for many years under bond until they were ready to be bottled and sold. Under bond? Yeah, actually, oh. somebody... Hmm. I was what exactly does that mean? Like, is that... The JJ it's Corey, like within the same context of like bottled in bond whiskey. Like. JJ Corey has something up on their website about it, so I'm about to go back to this. But also keep going with our um green spot. Um, this is a non age statement single pot still, y'all. Irish whiskey comprising of pot still whiskeys aged from between seven and ten years. The whiskey is matured in combination of new bourbon and refill bourbon casks as well as sherry casks. So new bourbon, ex bourbon. I don't know why I said refill. Hmm. New bourbon, ex bourbon, and then also <laughs> refill. Um, sherry going on there. So resurrection, the lost art of Irish whiskey bonding. Um, twenty fifteen. This is back to JJ Corey, y'all. They built a bonded rack house. Biggie, biggie, biggie. What is Irish whiskey bonding? Hmm. Irish whiskey okay. bonding is the practice of sourcing new make spirit. And mature Irish whiskey from Irish distillers and maturing, blending, and bottling unique ways. What? Let's say that again. What? <laughs> Irish whiskey bonding is the practice of sourcing new mixed spirit mm-hmm. and mature Irish whiskey from Irish distillers and then maturing, blending, and bottling it in unique ways. Wow. So, so literally, so it's just another way to say blending? It's, it's also a- another way to say not actually making your own Irish whiskey. Yeah, so, so that's another way to say you sourced it. You sourced, you sourced it, it and, and blended you it. Yourself, so you're bonding it. Um, okay. During the golden age of Irish whiskey in the 19th and 20th centuries, there were hundreds of distilleries operating on the island of Ireland. Most did not have their own brands of whiskey at that time. However, mm. these distilleries made their new make whiskey spirit and sold it wholesale to the bonders to age, blend, and bottle. The bonders were the publicans, grocers, publicans. I don't know. I've never heard publicans before. Not what's it called? Public. <laughs> they were publicans. The publicans. The publicans. Are we just <laughs> hyphenating? Are we, are we chopping off the re? The public. Of the, okay. The public. Chill. Okay. The publicans, the grocer, grocers, and mercantile owners. Okay. They would travel to their local distillery with their own barrels, fill them up with new mixed spirit, and then cart them home for aging and then blending. Hmm. Bonders were present in every town in Ireland, giving rise to regional styles. Sadly, the Irish whiskey industry collapsed in the 1930s, and the few remaining distilleries cut off the bonders' supply, leaving Irish whiskey bonding to die out. Huh. Huh. Wow. That's crazy as fuck. Damn, that is interesting. But for real though, we're learning a lot about this Irish whiskey life today. We really are mm-hmm. okay, okay. So yeah, so Green Spot is a bonded Irish whiskey. So they are sourcing their whiskey and then they are finishing themselves. Um, and once again, this is new make, so it's not like they are getting already aged whiskey and re-aging it this is new make spirit that they're grabbing and then choosing how they want to age it how they and what they want to mature it in. Mm. so i guess that makes the difference there huh, that is interesting that is very the spirits just get so complicated <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's, there's so, so much to nuance. Go down, once again i tell people all the time like i have left the wine world out of my head because i already have to there's figure so much out. to navigate in the whiskey world and the spirits world period yeah. but like i mean we're just addressing one umbrella the whiskey umbrella and there's so much within that one alone when we talk globally when we talk regionally when we talk like grain wise law wise and they have condensed it down into that and that's not even everything it's not even everything that's just another level of mastery we still have so much more to learn after we taste this one i have to show you what we got said in our group chat oh this is very interesting shante's Oh, can we? Can we? Wow. Uh, I just want. Okay. Ooh. Oh, okay. 
Oh, I even like his voice. Who that? Yeah. Who's that? This somebody she trying to claim as her new. Music. Oh, okay. Well, mm-hmm. he cute. Mm-hmm. Let me find out if she gonna go to Houston if I run <laughs> or Houston white boy. Okay. You know, I'm not mad at it because he is fine. He is, he is fine. <laughs> he is fine. And I don't say that often about uh, uh, the Anglos. But back, but back, I do actually. I I find a lot of white guys cute. There's not a ton that I find that. There are a lot of cute white boys. Don't get yes. me wrong. There are not a lot that I call fine. Oh no, that's true. That's true. Like that's a whole point. package. The voice, the you know, they, there's they, an energy it's a there. Energy. It's a whole energy. A whole so yeah, energy. you gotta be, you gotta be right to be fine. Yeah. He's a ten, but what's his butt? I wonder. Uh oh. <laughs> so for me, I'm getting like berries here, like blackberries, Berry blueberries, wow. little strawberry. It is giving very medley. A little some it's cream. It's also giving like a little cream and it's also giving a little chocolate. It is giving chocolate. It, you know what it is? And a little it's, bit of smoke. So it's like hot chocolate with the milk. Mmm. Yep. Yep. That's what it's giving me. Yep. When Usually we just start. Exactly. <laughs> Usually we just smell the powder, but no, this is like you've added that hot milk you to it. you added that milk to it and you're stirring it. Mm-hmm. There's something like tarry, smoky for me yeah. too there. And it's light. Character, it's nice. character, character. I can't. I don't even this remember where I got this green spot bottle from. So I'm so happy it was back on my shelf. It was meant for today. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Devin giving giving honey. Mm-hmm. I get those berries still in notes and in texture because I'm still getting that honeycomb waxiness. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm definitely getting more black blueberry, like black and blueberry on the, on the palate. palate. Mm-hmm. This is definitely interesting. rounder. This is making my whole mouth kind of like water, water. a little bit. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's so easy to sip. Wow. This is very nice. It's, um, it's a little spice, a little heat. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's. More Very, cinnamon to me than pepper this time. Yeah, not Get some pepper, cinnamon. But some type of, yeah. Heat. Mm. Wow. Mm. This, I don't, nice. this doesn't need water, but I wonder what water I'm will curious. Do to I was going to say it doesn't need it, but I am curious. Like, at Ooh, all. Do we know the proof on this one? Oh, I did not say it, did I? Um, oh, there's 40. That's why it doesn't really need water. I did four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll take that. Y'all, this is fucking delicious. <laughs> Another one of my favorite um, Irish whiskeys is Red um, Red Pot. Shit, I'm fucking that up. Red Pot. <laughs> is it Red Pot? Red. Hmm. <laughs> it's Red something, bitch. Red. Uh, okay, now I'm back to getting banana. I got ripe banana when I first like took a whiff of it before we started tasting. And now with the water, it's back. Never mind, y'all. I'm going to take that back. I don't remember the name of it at all. Because <laughs> yeah, all that shit that was popping up on Google was not it. <laughs> it's like red That was not red. it. Yeah, you said water. banana? I'm thinking like when plantain I, chips. Maybe that's the vibe then. Because that was definitely giving me like overripe. Yeah, it was on the nose. Yeah. The ones that don't we have Because when we were any... first, when we were just in the middle of talking and stuff, and I took a whiff up, I was yeah. like, what's banana? The ones that have like no like no salt, no sugar, just plain ass chips. Just plain ass plantain. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ooh, bitch, you gotta try what mm. I made. you because you can eat shrimp, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, you gotta try what I made on Sunday. I, I had leftovers. I brought it. Oh, oh, girl. And that chocolate came out with the water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did. That is the wishes. Wow, <laughs> I like it a lot. Delicious. I like it a lot. What's he, y'all? So I still haven't watched The Bear yet. Oh, you haven't watched The Bear yet? And you're on my Hulu. Girl, watch it. I know. I just have... For some reason... Okay, this is why... Let me give you why my hesitation has come. My hesitation has come because I don't... Is it going to be triggering? Is it going to trigger me? Secondly, (sighs) am I going to feel this white man trying to make this restaurant full of black people better? Am I going to feel it? Is it going to annoy me or am I going to feel it? I think you're gonna feel it. You I know, I heard it was 
deep and people were like it's a lot and i'm like i don't, I don't know about all that i have to prepare <laughs> myself for a lot i have to prepare myself and then the conversations that i've been getting into with black who has people, been the people saying it's a lot though white people and black okay. people i've been saying okay. it's both. both it's okay. both so, so if it's, it's a lot for black, black people it's a lot for black people because they're either relating to the staff in certain ways or it's a lot for them just processing that back of house which is Dang. a traumatic space. Yes. Back of house For is sure. a traumatic ass space. And I have, once again, I haven't watched yet. Not sure how much I want to be triggered about because I used to fight with back of house a lot. I am one of those motherfuckers that did not like the way that chefs talk to me. I still don't like the way they fucking move. And, you know, even though I am trying to find me a chef, husband or wife because, or they, because I need somebody to cook for me every day. I'm over it. But at the end of that, like, I just, like, I can't. I need... I don't know yet, but I keep telling myself that I am going to put it on. I am going to put it on. I just haven't. I also have seen this conversation on Facebook that it's, it's just people like me who are just like, do we really want to see a white man bringing together a team? Well, <laughs> so here's the, just a little context in terms of the show. So the... Well, he becomes an executive chef in this space, basically. He owns this restaurant he inherited from his brother. His brother left it in his hands when he died. So he inherited the staff and everything that came with it, the bullshit that came with it. And really, his goal with it was to make it the best that it could possibly be. And he, but he was already on that level or something. Like he was right? already on that level. Yes, he was like running one of the best restaurants in the world or something right. like that. And so he's like essentially bringing all of that knowledge and experience in like a formal kitchen and bringing it into this, like, sandwich shop right. of a space in fucking, what was it, like, Philly or some shit I think it's based, um, and trying to essentially run that kitchen like a more professional, lined out, everybody has their roles, everybody has their sections type of kitchen, like French style, whatever the fuck, right. for people who go to culinary school. I Don't don't get me line on the verbiage, because that's not my lane. I skipped, like the fire station. I skipped the, the kitchen shit and went straight to the bar. So Yeah, there's different There's stations. definitely different styles yeah. and stuff. And so he wanted to run it like a formal, like, French style kitchen or whatever. And they, it's essentially, it's like showcasing, like, all the, like, rejections that the staff had to it at first. They liked the system the way it was, as fucked up as the system was. They had their weird little ghetto, chaotic, fucking all over the place system that really didn't make any sense. <laughs> there were a sandwich shop that kept making spaghetti like it didn't make sense. And so he's trying to make it one function, trying to keep it within these certain margins because obviously they weren't have they didn't have that much money that, to work with or whatever at the time so he's trying to figure it all out and it's just showing him trying to juggle all this shit while also processing his his brother's death while also like he had he brought on this and the one thing i really love about it is that the um the chef that he winds up like leaning on is this girl this black girl great who came in the day that he like first inherited this shit and it's like finally like getting the ball rolling or whatever she comes in to like whatever the chef version of interning is or whatever and helps him like whip this whole system into shape oh and black it's great woman. to see yeah it had to have been had to have been there's no other way and so there's no other way the, the way they tell the story i like mm -hmm. there are the triggering moments because i have worked in kitchens obviously or like with kitchens couldn't side by side whatever because i've worked in restaurants mm -hmm. um so there is some of that, like, I can see as a back of the house, like, as witnessing the back of the house, because I was not back of the house. You could not pay me enough to deal with the level of bullshit that happens back of the house, especially the way they talk to people. And it, and that's where I like it. It wasn't, like, the disrespect and shit. Like, it was very much, hey, chef, yes, chef, no, chef. Like, he was training them to respect and honor each other. Yeah. And, you know, to, like, put everyone on this pedestal of, like, we refer to each other as chefs as a means of respect. Period. So, it's, it, the tone is right. The Good. tone is right. All right. The tone is definitely right. That's why I enjoyed it so much. I was so sad it was only eight episodes, because I watched the whole thing in an afternoon. Also, let's stop this eight episode is a season type of thing. Like, What's going on? What? Like, we're getting lazy. We are really getting lazy. We're getting lazy. We really are. Like, or is the get, money? Like, Grey's Anatomy, dwindling? where we do 20 episodes? I don't know. Like, let's get it together. Grey's Anatomy gives me 20 episodes. Let's get, let's get. What is wrong with y'all? Step y'all cookies What's up. What's really going on, though? Is it What's budgets? Eight, Maybe it's budgets? Eight. And what is the mini series thing? What is the mini series like, thing? What is this? What is drives this? me nuts. I, that's oh what, God, one thing I didn't like about Insecure is that they weren't giving me enough episodes. The, uh, child, I don't even want to talk Stop about giving me eight. 
I think, think it was nine for her. Secure, after the second season, it was trash. Oh, hot take. Oh. Don't give oh, a shit. fuck. I hated the last season. Oh, oh fuck. shit. Just, I was not prepared. We ever talked about that, actually. Can we, can we, I don't think we, we have never yeah. talked about that. I was not prepared for that to be a response. <laughs> not like not I still prepared. watched it for some <sighs> fucking reason. Every because we time. support Issa Rae. We do love Issa Rae. I love Issa Rae now. I do. I just think that the fucking show just went to trash. I did. I don't think it was <laughs> fucking did not was not into it. Well, at least you still watched me. I watched you it you support it and that's yeah. all we can ask yeah, I'm gonna that's all we can ask but the bear thing. is great okay. it's worth the watch alright I mean I'm going to do it it's good just didn't know exactly when I'm gonna do it I'll do it I'm gonna 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 do it I'm probably gonna do it before Tales because I think if, I just think that's gonna be a topic of discussion Probably. <laughs> a, a lot. I, well, it was going all around Facebook, so motherfuckers had their opinions for Ooh. sure. For sure. I like shit, bro. I love it. That's why I also like that show Sweet Bitter on Stars. But it was like highlighting formal dining, which I liked. Mm-hmm. And it was it was following this. But it was like all white people just about. Um, but it was like surrounding this like formal restaurant, uh, like steakhouse style in new york mm. and just this girl who moved from some other state to new york and this was like her first job there and she was super green and when it came to like restaurant life and just it, she was surrounded by all these like vets for real because they were at this one place for a long time yeah um that's the thing about new york you get a lot of career servers career bartenders career I mean, like, that was a lot of cities for a long time i feel like you know um before less so these days in in exactly. other state like in new york that's still very much a thing mm. i think more so than a lot of other states i mean maybe la too i haven't frequented their scene enough to know that for real but no i mean definitely because new york was the hub for so many of these things to like happen i think you get that a lot in georgia too you know, mm, like, you okay. know what i'm saying like i think that it depends on the area that you're in. I don't, but I think after 2020, it's no longer. Mm-hmm. You know, I think 2020 was the time that you saw the decline in for the sure for this because of oh shit, like this could somehow, some way, never happen. But like before 2020, it was like no matter what was happening, no matter what crisis, people were eating out, people were still dining, you are and people were going to drinking be able to and eat and drink. You're going yeah. to, you're, going to, you're just going to be able to do that, and you know, yep. yep. Why it was why it was huge for New York is because you can you can really sustain a life off yeah. of the type of money that you can get for mm-hmm. tips and stuff like that. Now, you know, tips are in question and stuff like that. So it's like, what is a career in our hospitality world actually look like? And that's what these these conferences are now trying to look at and talk about and the conversations that are happening. It's yeah, like, what making exactly our industry is more sustainable in for industry? people. That's what we're going to be talking about. Like, what does yeah. that really look like? What does that really look like? And I think it looks like individual, actual, I could be a business. I could be a business yeah, and still literally. work for this restaurant and still be yep. my own business my and own treat business. this as myself being my own business and understanding the expertise that I want to learn and stuff like that. Like you can be your own business in this industry and, and still work at a bar, still work as a server, still work yep. in these types of things. And I think that we should be treated as such true personally mm-hmm. you know agreed and still uh, be a part of a team agreed agreed so, yeah. agreed it's Green, a whole bunch a whole tomatoes, bunch of stuff <laughs> Green, <laughs> tomatoes chicken turkey um <laughs> but yes but y'all so i was on instagram the other day mm, 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 i guess mm. it, was, it was maybe not a week ago. weeks ago and i came across that chadwick bozeman i said the right bozeman good old chad love him rest in peace did not have a will that when still blows my he mind. passed away. And after all the money that went to who it needed to go to, the courts and stuff like that, his family and his wife split $2.3 million. Or something like that. Was it two point? It was yeah. It was like, like two, two, two point three, two point one, something like that. It was not a lot. Or it might have been it might have been two point five. Yeah, it's in that range. They each two point like, something. Yeah. Two point something million. Which baffles me. All the, a lot of things are baffling me. I here. mean, can we talk about this man's fucking work? His <laughs> fucking 42. He did, um, he played, was that James Brown? Mm. He played Thurgood Marshall. Mm. 
Um, I mean, let's not even talk Marvel, Black Panther. Like, hello, hello. like, we, and, then the that's not all of them. and then in game. So I mean, he was in that Marvel Universe. Period. Period. Um, and that's not even. I'm not even scratching the surface. I don't know all. We're of them not off even top scratching head, the so, He was in the, the joint surface. with um, Viola Davis on Netflix. Um, can't think of the name, but if any Netflixers would know what I'm talking about. Remember? Uh, but it was a great fucking movie. Um, he's just done so much. And that really baffles me. I, the, the main thing that baffles me is that he knew that he had cancer. And, 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 and so most of the people around with him. With knowing yeah. that, why was it not, even like your, your handlers, even if it's just your business manager or whatever, why did no one, your lawyers, you have lawyers. I know you had lawyers. Why did no one make sure you secure your will and testament? And like, like, so someone, maybe he didn't think he needed to because he, it was just his wife and his parents to worry about. I, I think and Erica brought this up to me, you know, with sh- the way she's navigated the medical world. She just talked about how hard it is to do all that shit. Yeah. How hard it is to actually be able to like sit down and get your affairs in order mm-hmm. if they haven't been being getting gotten in order to right like to all of a sudden now I need to try to do this right now. Yeah. I mean that is one thing, that, especially that when you're just trying to process up, the mortality of it all already. Right. Like, damn. Talk about think insecure. About- that was one thing they brought up about black people even thinking about wills and and what that looks like to talk to your parents about hey what's going on like yeah, what do you want to do yeah you know i haven't specifically talked to my parents about because honestly i need to not they ain't gonna be giving me nothing <laughs> positive i love y'all both i just need to figure out whatever debt that might be coming my way but still <laughs> like I talked, to, I talked to my i only had a couple people talk to about it but i we talk about it actually. it's just kind of like i've asked my mom more about her parent her mom Mm-hmm. Like what is what's going on there? And then like yeah. you know, she said that her dad that passed away. Um, she wasn't really close to him, but supposedly he left some la- some land in her name. And okay. also, but we don't know where the deed is. We don't know, you know, these types of, these types of things. Yeah, it's like we're not keeping up enough, and for good reason. We know our shit is you know has been as unorganized f- for a reason for us not to be on you know in a running, I guess pace with you know white america but at the same time it's just like you know you wish that somebody said something so Mm -hmm. it is a a point of contention was just like i do need to have more of a serious talk and especially while they're alive and healthy and and well let's think about that's why i wasn't shy about just mentioning it like to my mom and my grandma because those are the main two people like i just need to know what's what where's where's what and all the things because i'm the oldest between like my mother's side, like my uncle has had my cousin. She's seven years younger than me, and then it's my brother. Mm-hmm. We're thirteen years apart. So the person who would probably be in charge of the most stuff would likely be me. Right. So I was like, well, look, I want to know why y'all are alive and healthy. I don't want to wait till somebody on their deathbed or something and be like, where's the will? But it's also just where's like having. So my mom is a a, a daughter of six. Ooh. And then her, my grandma was a daughter of fifteen, right? So there's like a lot of hands a lot of, and there's going a, lot of a lot of hands. things. So it's like I think the insecurity comes for me is to just bring an insecurity to my mom, where it's like she probably don't want to deal with all she these have moving to. parts, right? She like have to, though. yeah, hundred percent, inevitably. Like, so it's like better wanna, to try to get you know, ahead of it, or just like even if it's the point of like, oh, we're talking about like what's what's what am I going to pass down the 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 confronting am i passing anything down when i'm gone mm-hmm. that insecurity too right so it's like yeah. there's so my many mom is blockage about that. There's, there's so much mental i i understand because it would also be my blockage was like well i don't really want to talk to whoever i'm supposed to be passing down anything and i ain't got nothing for him you know what i'm saying like i it would but be hard i care for less about anybody having something for me as much as i just want to know with what you do have i need to know where the documents are we know what we do care you about, have a like, will it's just like, like but i think for a parent it's a different so they're thinking of from a different perspective to have your assets or debts especially or, older and or debts and stuff you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's just like you're looking back at your life like what was it? it is kind of like you're summing up your life and saying well what am i leaving my kids okay yeah All right. yeah that, that's kind of if you didn't start now like if you like i would say when you have a child start we, we especially with, you, exactly so it's like you start but you that's why we've started like just having like investment accounts and stuff like that the shit that just go back through 
you know, yeah. and re reminisce no. through all the, you know, and then that, then yeah. there the depression. Sits. It's like you're essentially like a, having a summation of like every good choice and every mistake, every good choice, every bad choice, every like, yeah, good, good thing, thing I invested in or every opportunity I missed to invest or whatever. Like I get it, but to but go you back to talk about Goldsman, I just don't. I, yeah, now that one, yeah, I just don't understand. I just feel like he had, there's so much money that isn't being accounted for. Yeah, like. I'm more I ain't so no accountant. Just, I'm just confused. I'm wondering if may, I don't know. Let me stop theorizing because I was gonna say maybe they just they paid off a bunch of assets or I something, and maybe that's what was left. After maybe payment. that's the liquid cash that was left after accounting for everything that needed Half to be it. covered. I don't know. I guess that makes, makes more it, sense, but like, I don't know. But going back to like the thing, like for us, like same thing we're thinking about, like a. Uh, uh, Justin Timberlake's like catalog and stuff like that. When we hear these numbers, it's mm-hmm. like, damn, they've for some reason feel like they should be so much so much bigger. And I really feel like they probably really should be. It's just we don't know the inner workings of why it's not. Exactly. <laughs> Cause we just don't know they they actual business like that. <laughs> We're just theorizing <laughs> as fans. Period, period. But I feel like Chadwick Boseman should have had so much more liquid left. I just like at least like. I mean, they ain't walking away broke now, so they ain't broke. No, no real sympathy for y'all. Who knows? knows What else happened after that, or what he was given before that? Yeah. Hopefully, they get some residuals, some back end, because his movie's gonna continue to play. Oh, oh, forever, forever. Um, and then also Top Gun, y'all. Oh my God, Top Gun was so good. Um. If you haven't seen Top Gun, y'all just have never seen Top Gun, so now I gotta, I gotta go back and watch the old one. So the old one's on Prime Video for free. Okay, and then (laughs) Top Gun is pretty much about Tom Cruise. So what I didn't know is that Top Gun, the first one, revolutionized how movement um, uh, filming was. What gave uh, revolution to that, I guess. And so what they did, they did a lot of um, shooting planes in the ways that planes had never been shot before mm. and how actors pl- do that. And it's just about, it's pretty much about Top Gun is this uh, training for the best pilots ever. And they do a oh. lot about like how to like actual like fight, dog fight and stuff like that. Wow. I actually had no clue what Top Gun was about. Yeah, it's really, it's really, it's I really, knew it was it's an action movie, pretty cool. and I knew it was Tom Cruise. Yeah, it's pretty cool about like it's it's, it's a little patriotic, but then of course, of course. Um, the new one is pretty much mirrors all of the, the old one, one. Okay. but in like more futuristic or not even futuristic, just more timely, M- more today. Yeah, yeah. What was so great about this is that the actors there were actually in these planes acting. Oh. So they had the actual like re- like a real some some of the scenes actually Tom Cruise flew some of those craziness. Also, um, they Not the other actors were in the back of these planes, feeling all the force of the gravity, all the things like you see them like almost mm. like knocking out. You see them almost like do, like when I say method acting what to is happening method acting oh like God. it was just it was so it was really just. Some crazy shit. That's, That's dope. dope. It was crazy. But I love people can do their own stunts. That's so great. It's, and it's like, is it stunts or is it like you're taking this a little too far? We're just gonna have to. Like, <laughs> That's next level method acting. Like That's commitment. I'm in the planes with y'all and talking about motherfucking insecure. Fucking Lawrence was in it. Oh, yeah, he's in it. He's in it. Um, and he was chosen for like the last little like gotta do the mission. So shout out to the black man fucking fucking it up, doing a good ass job. Um. No, I had it a lot of fun watching it, and like it keeps you intense. Like you're literally like, like keeps you in the edgy seat. Yeah, I mean, and I went to go with Greg, and we left, and we was like, that was a fucking good ass movie. Like it was just a good movie. It's intense. It's nostalgic. If you watch the first one, and it you know brings to like emotions mm. and like plays on the heartstrings in okay. a not corny way. Like, and this is in theaters right now. Mm-hmm. It was oh. good. It was really good. Yeah, we're all trying to find something to go to the movies to see. But yeah, I was like, there's not much happening right if now. You, if Thor, if, I'm gonna wait till it gets to Disney Plus because I'm just not sure I'm gonna love it. But true. Um, but, but Top Gun, I'm not opposed. Top, it was. It was. I, I I I tell people to go see it because it was just like it's just a good. It's a heartfelt movie where it just makes you you leave like, ha, huh, that was really good. Like a good mission. Okay. You know, like 
and like a good motivation of like we got this like he's tom cruise is very much so trying to save these pilots lives Mm -hmm. but give them such a dangerous route because it's like people don't do this type of flying but this is the only way that you will leave this alive Mm -hmm. it's fucking great well, I hope you sold me, bitch. You yeah, sold me. That's good. That's I'm going to go see it. Go that's a good it. little date night, so I might do that yeah. on Friday. Okay, let's see. Last oh, yes. sip. Let's do our last sip, and then we'll talk about where we eat it, and, yes. and then life will be life. <laughs> 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 All right, so our fourth and final sip is a Napa Castle single malt 12 year, which I'm actually glad I got a chance to highlight Napa Castle because I actually like them a lot. Awesome. Their team's pretty great. Um, and they put a lot of they put a nice little chunk of change in my pocket over the pandemic. So nice. Um, so Napa Castle, yeah, they I like them. That actually I've been holding on to this bottle since 2020. Oh wow. Um, Napa Castle 12 year old. Their signature expression is an exceptional single malt made exclusively from malted barley. So we went from two blends to a single pot still to now a single malt. Awesome. Um, triple distilled, one batch at a time, in traditional onion-shaped copper pot stills. The whiskey is then aged in urban oak casks for 12 years. The delicate distillation process, along with the moist and temperate climate, yields a distinctive flavor of this remarkable Irish single malt. And this is, we're back at 92 proof. Okay, awesome. Not the First of all, onion shape. That's kind of Onion cool. shaped. I like that they specify yeah, that. Because you can exactly you can picture the, the shape of that pot still. Yeah. Which means it's very round and squatty. So yep. there's a lot of opportunity. There's less opportunity for um, reflux. for reflux. So the they're holding on. They're holding on a lot of those flavors from that yeah. still, and it's copper. So it's, they're still getting that sulfur and stuff out, but yeah. less so. So there's still going to be less light. Some of, yeah, it should have more character because of that. Mm. Still giving pale lemon though. Still giving pale lemon. They all giving pale lemon. Yeah. They just kind of went up in in depth a little bit. Yeah just as we progressed but between these two these two look exactly the same and these two look exactly the same that's true oh, it smells, smells so good oh <laughs> it's just i'm just it's sitting there smelling it smells really good this one's giving more red berries for me Ooh. less blackberry blueberry more like cherry definitely more strawberry. red berries you're right but i'm also getting like vanilla almost like vanilla wafer cookie because mm, it's like yes, sweet it's exactly not raw that. bean yep definitely vanilla wafer cookie mm-hmm I'm getting lemon. I'm also getting orange juice. Get it. Ooh, yes. Freshy squeeze, not cold. <laughs> <laughs> that was forever one of my favorite quotes ever. Oh my god, it's yes. so great. Oh god. Oh this is one of the best. Um. Mm. God, it smells so good. It does smell great. I even kind of still grassy. get hints of uh, yes, yeah, hints of grass, grass. and mm. also still some hints of caramel when I go back and forth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That vanilla wafer cookie for me though is very like there. It's very there. Wow. Mm. Chocolate and coffee for me. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow, this is bomb. Mm. It has that mm. that that ooh, it has that whiskey grassiness that I really, really love. Yes. Where it's the like bourbon your, cask influence is there. Yeah. You can tell it spent mm. a significant amount of time in a bourbon cask. Mm. It's, it's pulling all the best herbs things. Mm-hmm. Of some sort. Mm. Then, wow. A little uh, thyme. Yeah. Maybe tarragon. Oh, yeah. Something savory. Maybe sage. Maybe. Oh, this is a good mm. progression here. Yeah. And then weirdly, like... Out of nowhere, my mouth just started watering. It wasn't immediate at all for me. Mm-mm. It's a slow roll. It's like, first it dries all the way out, and then the back of my mouth starts to water. It's fucking great. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I want three drops just to see mm-hmm. what it's going to give. I want to do mm. two for you. You got a little less than yours. That, um... Oh, do you want the third? Yeah, I'll do a third. That's, um... Let's taste it. Mm-hmm. That's probably why I've been holding on this cherry. for two years. That cherry is really there. Ooh, yes. Cherry came out on the nose, too. A little bit. More chocolate came is out that than that anything. Cor- is corn? Mm. Mm. Are you smelling corn? Can you have corn in, in, in apostle? Well, I, well, this is all malted barley. Oh, this is all malted barley. Because it's single malt. Oh, it's giving that, like... But that doesn't mean we single, couldn't possibly get that. Single malt, right. Mm-hmm. Right. 
So sorry guys. Maybe, maybe that influence is coming from the bourbon, bourbon cast. Mm-hmm. Cause even smell like honestly. Oh god, yes. If it wasn't for the color, I probably would have. I probably would have nosed and already went in bourbon. No lie. Like blindly. on the nose, honestly. Blindly in a blind joint, this could. So the color if, is if the nothing. if the glass was black and we just smelled it. Oh yeah. It could easily be mistaken for a bourbon. Yeah. Like mm. I guess it's because of that vanilla wafer thing, though. Maybe giving that malt that malt barley for sure. But there's malt barley and bourbon. Right. So it's like I would have failed. Damn, because it because it, it it could easily pass for like a mostly corn bourbon with mm-hmm. some like let's say seventy percent corn, thirty percent malted barley or something yeah. like that. Like maybe like because there's not a ton of peppery notes, rye, so I wouldn't say, I wouldn't throw a rye. In. Well, it's the white pepper is there. Yeah, white pepper's there, and then it also gives some of that menthol-y numbing quality exactly. that you get from a rye. So yeah. Ooh, that's child. crazy as shit. I would have fucked that so up. So I'm gonna give it sixty percent corn. Yeah. 10% rye. Okay, 30 malt. 30 malted bar. 30 malt. <laughs> if I was tasting this in a blind. <laughs> that is a good ass whiskey. Shout out to Napa though. Castle. That was bomb. Give a little splash. <laughs> All right, y'all. Bonus. It got nothing to do with whiskey. You got to go show it? Some Christ- <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Sponsored. Nothing's shit. going on. Nothing's happening here. Nothing's happening here. <laughs> we are sipping in Añejo Cristalino. It's delicious. Yeah, actually, this yes. Cristalinos, I'm so happy for y'all because I personally don't like to drink tequilas unless they're fucking white. And I'm sorry to be that person. I'm going to be that black girl. I want a white tequila. Like, really? Mm-hmm, I don't know. I'm open to the whole spectrum. I'm as long as there's open. no adobo. I'm open to the whole spectrum, but I've constantly am being... God, completely disappointed by Anejos and Reposados right now. The only Reposado that has I feel you on that. constantly given me life, Tequila Ocho. And Tequila Ooh, really? Ocho's Reposado. I still like Herodua's Reposado. Oh, Their Anejo is, for some reason, hit or miss for me. Uh, the Reposado I always like. The Blanco and the Anejo are hit or miss for me. I don't like an Anejo tequila. That's prob- This is the best Cristalino Anejo. This is only Cristalino Anejo I've had. Yo. I don't like Anejo fucking tequilas right now because they are fucking vanilla bombs. I was gonna say I don't want it's, it to taste like a whiskey ah uh, that's the only thing I don't vanilla like or just sweet vanilla like what is this the yeah, agave this and the wood they ain't matching they're just not matching like I don't know if y'all need to start aging or something else like that would be really nice for maybe like Asian a woven dried agave husk I don't mm-hmm. fucking know but like it's the for me, the wood is not giving what it needs to give for y'all, and I'm sorry. Like, I am not an Anejo bitch. I'm not an Anejo tequila bitch at all. It all just depends for me. It, de- it, it definitely depends. Don't get me wrong. There's probably something out there that I'm like, oh, yeah, that's the way you do it. Yeah, but, but, but across the board, am I just drinking anybody's Anejo? No. I'm not going up to yeah. Anejo. Um, if I'm going up, I'm going to Reposado, and mm-hmm. then I don't really need it. Like, I, yeah. I just don't. Give me Blanco. Give me Blanco all day. I'm going to have a great day. I'm going to have a great time. I put it in the freezer, and I'm drinking it like it's water. Like, Give me some white. Give I me have, some white. I'm really loving Cristalinos right now. I think Torrance giving us that Dahlia definitely sparked the Cristalino Absolutely. wave for me. Because I did not realize how great they are. They uh, are. I didn't even realize I didn't realize them as a category a, for starters. No, I probably like it already. Um we need to do like a Cristalino category. I think I have That's gonna be an expensive Cristalino episode. over there. Ooh, okay. So um this one, Don Julio 70. And Dahlia are like, oh my god, I can just drink them so easily, and they're easy to sip. They're easy to take shots of. Like, oh my god, mm, mm, mm. it's fucking fabulous. It's fucking fabulous. Something about stripping the color really makes it better for me. It's, I think it's all mental. It's all mental. Maybe all mental. It might be. Oh, excuse me. But I love it. Whatever that thing is mentally, I love it. Because what I like about it, honestly, I think is when you look at a, I mean, unless you know you're drinking like a gin or something like that. Like when you look at white spirit, Mm. unless it's gin or an agave spirit, you don't, like you kind of know to expect characterfulness from a gin, agave, uh, agave. So whether it's tequila, mezcal, so tall, bacchanora, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know to kind of anticipate a lot of character. Yeah. Or at least you hope to. Yeah. But I don't know, for some reason... 
I like the Cristalino, I think, because mentally I'm expecting a Blanco, just looking at it right away, but then it just drinks, like, so much more. Like, there's just so much more. There's a lot more character. Happening to it, yeah. But it still has a big caramel bomb. It still has a big vanilla nice. bomb. That I, mm. for me, agave spirits and things that are coming from Mexico, like, I want earthy and grassy. Dirty. Yeah. And grassy. And I want, and, I want some salt in and, there. And I want pineapple. Some. Like, I want ripe, overripe mm. pineapple. Like, that's what mm-hmm. I want from my tequilas. The, when it's, I want when that it's, and when, the aging. When it, when it, when it comes <laughs> with... Like, this is delicious. Don't get me wrong. This is so smooth. I want to taste Kevin Hart's Crystalina. I wonder what that's like. Uh, I forgot um, Kevin Hart has one. And does it, um, doesn't LeBron James have a tequila now, too? Supposedly. Who There's just child? so many celebrity Ooh. tequilas. Um, I'm going to some of you reps and you PR people who work for these brands to, like, send us a bottle. Yeah. Manifesting so, that right yeah. now. We're going to have that, too. But, mm-hmm. yeah, so this is delicious, though. It is It is actually it's very easy sipping. And I want to have it with fresh ginger syrup and soda water. Oh, that sounds fabulous. And lime juice. I was going to say, and lime. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. But thank y'all. That's our show today. We... Yes. I'm eating oh, at home because I'm yes. fucking cooking like shit. <laughs> I made a bomb. When I say I perfected... My white wine cream sauce on Sunday, and I'm so proud. Did you write of it down? No, but you I measured it, it, so I remember my measurements. Okay, that's all that matters. I remember my measurements. I know exactly what I did. I kept it simple, and everything else was just a tweak. So. Nice. <sighs> so love proud. it. We love I'm to so hear proud. it. Yes. I'm eating in the fucking house. I've been doing that's good. That's true. I've been grilling like shit. We went like to shit. Metro Bar last week. If you didn't see, yes, um, Metro Bar was lit. Great ass time. There was a seafood spot, a seafood uh, taco, uh, not taco truck, a seafood truck. Right outside, that was making really good food. I had tacos. At least what they had left. Also delicious. Yes, you did have tacos. Mm-hmm. I didn't try them only because they were corn. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I love me a corn tortilla now. I love me a corn tortilla. But yes, y'all. Yes, I've been having a bomb ass food at home. We saw CCB. We saw UCB. Um, shake their ass, and it was it was great. It, it was made like, new friends. It was sir, great. Got to see friends, old friends. Made new friends. Saw old friends. Like literally, my whole family was there in one place. The only people I was missing Montana and Rich, and that was it. Yeah. All yes, was I was hoping place. to see Rich, but I'm glad he had time off. Yes, me too. That but everybody was in one place, and um, it was fab. That was my heart. So I'm loving the new bar lineup behind the bar. Metro Bar is great. Yeah, right. Yeah, shout out to Lavelle yes, and Greg and, and, and Kayla. Yes, oh y'all, we had a great time. Um, I love it there. They are now open Wednesday through Sunday. So yes, so Thursdays. y'all go to Metro Bar. Go to Metro Bar. Like well, thank y'all for listening. See ya. Slash watching. Make sure you share, subscribe, <laughs> comment, engage. Oh. Digitally. I do want to leave you all. And in person. With this reel. Just Ooh, in case. Yes. You are not being communicative. <laughs> with yes. Okay, let's end it on this fabulous note. This little food for thought. Okay, just a little food for thought for you. Don't be afraid to ask somebody what turns them on or what they like during sex. You know, knowledge is power. You can't know what you don't know. You can't ace the test you haven't studied for. You can't know what to study if you ain't been to class. And honestly, this ass is a class. Period. Okay? So ask my puss for a syllabus. Period. A syllabus. Ask my dick for a rubric. Oh, oh my. <laughs> ask my holes for the semester goals. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> Catch the Holy Ghost with that one. Period, y'all. So, (sighs) on that that note, bye. bye.